Park High School PCTV presents PIAA District 1 playoff action. Upper Perth taking on Lansdale Catholic. Hello, everyone. Andre Westcott along with Dave Ridenauer. And Dave, big ball game today. And, you know, you always talk about, like, weather playing an effect in the ball game. Both teams mirror images of themselves, like the pass, like the run. How will today's overcast and drills affect these two ball clubs? Well, you know, it remains to be seen, Andre. Uh, both teams live by the pass more so than, well, excuse me, I should say Lansdale Catholic lives by the pass more so than uh, than Upper Perk because Craig Austin runs the football. Their running game has been a little bit suspect at times this year. So the weather may come into play because Upper Perk does get a lot more ground uh, yardage than they do through the air. You know, talking with Coach Algio before the ball game, you talked about the first time they met. Even though you looked at the score, it was like 41-14. You could throw that out the window. It was a tough ball game until the fourth quarter. Now, when you look at this from a defensive point of view, when you see the points that have been scored, how do you get this ball club geared up as far as Upper Perk is concerned? Do you go back to the last ball game when you played before and say, okay, let's look at this film, get ready for this one? How do you approach a ball game like today? Well, I think they're going to wipe this slate clean, Andre. I think they're going to start all over again. I think this is going to be more of a game played from the shoulders up for Upper Perk's standpoint. It's a mental thing. They've got to get over that hurdle of losing the Lansdale Catholic the last two times they played them. This is a big game for them. They haven't won a Pac-10 championship uh, ever in the history of the Pac-10. The last time they won any kind of championship was when their coach was a junior in high school so they have to be pretty excited it's a home game for them if they can't come out here and play fired up excited football today i don't know if they ever can now finally on the other side of the coin you got the confidence factor lc is playing very good football as well as up a perk now from coach algio's standpoint he also throws out the last game as well how does he get his gear his team get off for this ball game well i think lc has played this year pretty much as a business-like attitude all year long they knew what they had to get done and they got it done today i think they have to come out with a little bit more fire and a little bit more emotion you know their goal wasn't to win the pac 10 their goal was to get into the state championship so they're taking one step at a time right now and they're trying to achieve that goal that they set in the beginning of the year. Looking forward to a good ball game. We'll have the first half coming up right after this. Keep checking on that. All right, gentlemen, shake hands again. Reintroduce yourself. All right, gentlemen, you're in the playoffs. The playoff game, let's conduct yourselves accordingly, all right? Control your teammates, control yourselves. Let's not have any foolish penalties. Let's have a good, clean, hard game. Walk away to your huddle after the play ends. All right, just a review here. We'll go for the toss, okay? Okay, we got to call the toss here for the fans, okay? You're going to call it. Same, it doesn't matter. He calls heads, and the heads it is. It turns out the same way, all right? You get the choice, all right? We'll do this. Lands down, wins the toss, defers. Okay, Upper Park Yeoman, you want to receive. Is that correct? All right, Lansdale Catholic, you're going to defend that scoreboard. Okay, put your backs over there, gentlemen. Defers. LC has won the okay. toss, but we'll defer to the second. We'll receive. All right, gentlemen, shake hands. Good luck to both teams. Good luck, gentlemen. Have a good game. And welcome back to Upper Park for our District 1 ball game. You can check out the game conditions, Dave. No chilly today. Yeah, we've had pretty good weather all year long, Al. This, this game is, again, part of, excuse me, I'm sorry. I, I <laughs> okay. had the over and under. I couldn't even make the kickoff <laughs> Thanks, yet. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Andre. That's tough to follow, I even too. have it written on my hand, <laughs> <Yeah>. Andre. <laughs> my cheat sheet didn't work. <laughs> but anyway, Andre, you know, we've had, yeah. and part of the game of football has to deal with winter, especially once you get into the November months. And there we go. The Crusaders are 9-1. and one. The Indians are 9-1. and one. Co-champs for the Pac-10. And, LC had the first game, as you mentioned, in the top of the show, Andre, 41-14. But, again, I think the game was a lot closer than the final score. Going into the fourth quarter, they had a pretty good ball game. I think the experience factor for LC came to the forefront there as they were able to pull that ball game out. Exactly. See Coach Moyer for Upper Perk as Upper Perk will be receiving. LC will be kicking off to him. Like you said, they you get into a lot of situations. You're ready to bring a lot of stats into a ball game. But in a ball game like this, like we talked about earlier, the stats go out the window. It's just going to be some good hard nose, good football. The kids are geared up for it. I'm looking for a good game today. Well, I think the only stat that really matters right now is that LC has beaten him the last mm -hmm. two times, Dre. And I think that's a mental thing that uh, uh, Upper Perk has to get over. And I think they need to start the football very well, the football game very well. As we do start off, and it goes out of bounds. Out of bounds. We'll see what Upper Park does. Do they make him kick it over again, or are they going to take the ball on the 35-yard line? 
also, Dave, when you look at this ball game too, because offensive, I think it's going to be important that both teams do get a good start in this ball game, whether they're going to run it or pass it. Try to set the tone for it. Level Perk will be taking over for the first possession. On the 35, think yep. I was going to go look at the coach's son. You know, this is kind of an, a unique game, Andre, is the fact that we have the coach and his son on one side. We have grandpop and grandson on the <laughs> other side, and both of them are quarterbacks. A matter of tradition here is first and ten up the park. Backs are in the eyes, you see. And picking up a couple for this Tion Higgs for up the park. Well, you know, Craig Alston, I read about him lately and the fact that he gets himself so worked up and so pumped up for football games that you know, he can't get himself mentally ready and physically ready to get into a ball game. And Higgs started a game as a tailback so Alston could kind of get into the flow as you get a look at the, the guys up front. And it was kind of interesting, Andre, when they went out to flip the coin, that three of these offensive linemen, Hallman, Longenecker, and Yoder, went out there to, were the tri-captains for upper perk. That tells you the kind of respect they have for their offensive line. Second and eight. And going up the middle for a couple, as you can see, Craig Austin. He's generated a lot of interest, too. I was talking to some of the people about him, and schools are very interested in him. I understand that Princeton has made a nod at him, and Notre Dame asked for some taste from him. So he's got a lot on his shoulders today as far as running the football and helping up a perk establish their running game. Well, you know, he set the, the uh, school record for over 1,900 yards here. <coughs> Kahim Tripp last year had a great year, gained about 1,800-plus. This year, number 44 steps up there into the tailback for the first time and, and gains darn near 2,000 yards. He's trying to find that 2,000 yard mark here today. On our first pass play completion down to, it looks like Dan Cotteritz for up a perk. Cotteritz ran the simple out route. Moyer hasn't thrown the ball as much this year as he has in the past and that's basically because of the fact that Higgs, Higgs and uh, um, and Austin have done such a good job out of the backfield, but they do pick up the first down. There's Jeff Moyer to coach his son. They said the last time Upper Perk won a championship of any kind is when his pop was uh, a junior here at Upper Perk Yeoman High School. You know, going back to the uh, where's the beef scenario is the fact that both these ball clubs are big, so they shouldn't have any trouble as far as one wearing down the other as this game progresses. First and 10, just underway with 10.20 to go in the first quarter. Once again, Austin gets the handoff. And he goes off right tackle and picks up a nice game. Well, he did a good job, you know. You know. I don't know if you'll see a whole lot of 40, 50 yard runs here this afternoon. Uh, I don't know if they have that kind of speed. You know, uh, number 30 has that kind of speed in the backfield, uh, Tion Higgs. But other than that, you know, they're more of a grinder. There you get a good look at the head coach, Steve Moore. And I'm sure he's got to have a, a special place in his heart for this ball club with his son doing such a great job uh, leading them to a, their, their first championship. And he's just done a super job over here at Upper Perk for a long, long time. You know, Dave, we always look at, like, the top performers in these ball games, like Roger, the wide receiving spot in Austin, but it all starts up front, moving that football and helping to move the chains, the front line, as we talked about the where's the beef aspect. So it's going to be very good in the trenches as well as Austin gets the handoff. Austin picks up another first down, Dre. Well, like they said, I'm a per Coach Morris said before the game, he said, I want to establish some type of success, either running or passing, depending on what they want to come out with. And now you can see that they're trying to mix it up a little bit. We had one pass play so far, but basically everything's on the ground. We're down that defensive front line and the clock as well. Well, I think they also want to keep the ball away from Michael DeMar Lear in the Lansdale Catholic offense. I think the, the, the best defense right now for Upper Perk is maintaining an offensive drive and keeping Michael DeMar Lear playing safety rather than taking snaps from the center. First down for Upper Perk is there on the move. And once again, Austin's number is called. He picks up a couple going up the middle. Well, there's their big player, number 43. That's Keating. Joe Keating is a guy who's received a lot of interest from the next level. He's their middle linebacker. He's a guy who's got to really shuffle between tackle to tackle and make every tackle inside there. Now, their big guy in up front is number uh, 62, Chuck Lamenti. I think he's had a super year for Coach Algio. He's certainly an all-league caliber defensive tackle. He's the kind of guy that keeps the offensive lineman off number 43's legs so he can make those tackles, Andre. All right, second down and six, Dave. Of a perk content with keeping the ball on the ground. And once again, Austin gets the carry and a nice pickup. Trying to get close to another upper perk first down. At time number 52 jumps into the hole, Matt Stracker. 
And again, there's the counter. Trey Austin really not being able to pick up as much as we thought it was going to be. Looks like number 43 uh, Keating in there as well. We'll be calling his number quite a bit too, offensively and defensively, as we see. Well, here's another big third down situation, Andre. Third I don't know if they're in a two down situation or not here. Will they go for it on fourth down if they don't make it? We'll see if uh, Coach Moore elects to put the ball up in the air. Nope. Gives it to Austin straight up. He's got the first down and more. Boy, big block that time by number 77, Toby Cole. He did a good job coming across. Watch number 77 right there get a good block at the point of attack. He won that battle with Ken Kosminski. And as a result, that first down. Very impressive how they sealed off the left side of the LC attack, too. Two tacklers taking out the play as well as opening up that hole, enabling the first down to be achieved. 7.30 to go, still no score, just underway here at Upper Perk. Well, Upper Perk's going heavy to the left side. They've been moving their tight end over the left side. They have two wide receivers out here. They're trying to uh, you know, overshift and catch LC under man. And here's Austin trying to go it's wide. Good. Right off that left side, too. Number 44, Brian Foy steps up. You know, Foy, Herman, DeMar Lear really gives them a, a nice defensive secondary. Maybe that's part of the reason why Coach Moyer has not elected to put the ball up much either, Andre, the fact that LC has such a good secondary. Exactly. And you got success on the ground, too. You might as well just stay with what's working. So far, on the way, a 10-play drive over Perk is putting together. On a second down and four, Dave. Now they're going heavy to the right side. Here goes counter Trey that way. Oh, and Austin has a nice hole to run through and picked up the first down. Might have got close when that one carrying the ball myself. Nice hole, nice job done by the offensive line. They've, for Perk. they've really been doing a good job running the counter gap, the counter Trey. This is the Washington Redskin play where they bl block down, block down, pull that backside tackle and guard. There you can see the hole up the middle. Again, this is not the kind of day you're going to bust long runs, Andre, but you want to put your head and shoulders down and pick up four or five tough yards. You're not really trying to bust plays right now. You're just trying to ground out first downs, and, and Upper Perk right now is executing to a T. Exactly, Dave. Still on the move in the first and ten. Once again, Austin, this time stop at the line of scrimmage. Good defensive pursuit there. John Briner from LC, one of the hitters. Yeah, he's their big guy, six foot five inches, 260 pounds. He's the one guy that does have a decided uh, height and size advantage over uh, Upper Perks offense. We'll see if Coach Moyer likes to go with a, a play action pass right here. There you get a good look, look at Briner at right there. Austin already has nine carries for 42 yards unofficially up here in the booth. Dave Devlin helping us out, giving us some stats. Thank you, David. Here they go again, Andre, how they Second shift over there. They got nine. tight end and, and a slot to the right side. Now they're going to go back weak side. But up to the left side as Austin picks up a couple. And John Bryan once again up tripping him at, that, at the line of scrimmage. But he still managed to gain out a couple. As they're moving deep into lands of Catholic territory. Or risking about the 12. Well, you know, they're calling, it, they're calling it the judgment day around the college ranks with Penn exactly. State, Michigan, and, and North State, Carolina, North Florida Carolina. State. I think it's kind of a judgment day right here at Upper Perk. Upper Perk is trying to establish themselves as a football program. They really want to come out and play well. LC certainly the more known of these two teams, and Upper Perk really going to be judged today on how they end up and how they play. Well, so far, doing a good job of keeping the ball and running out first downs. Now he's spread, Third the, seven. spread the field. Oh, Austin has a nice pickup. He should get the first down and more down inside the five. So the running attack's working. <clears throat> so what they did, Andre, is spread the field. They went single back. They went double one side. Look at number 60. He's leading them through the hole. He can't find anybody to block. That's a great sign for an offensive lineman. Ottinger's trying Ottinger. to look for somebody to hit. There's no one there. You know there's a hole. And Austin gets down inside the one yard line. It's going to be first and goal from about the six inch line. Up a perk doing a fine job. Like I said, only one pass play so far on this drive. Everything else has been on the ground with Austin. Higgs had a carry as well on this drive. 422 to go first quarter. No score. Sneak. No, they're going to give it to Austin. Austin bullies right his way in. Go wait for the official word. Touchdown for up a perk. Austin on the short run over the right side. Well, that time a lot of plays, a lot of coaches will call a sneak because it's the safest play, but I think Coach Moore wanted to reward Austin for all the hard work he had as I think that was his 11th carry already here in his first drive. Fouls big number 99 who leads out the way, Darren Henry. And Henry does a good job and Austin does the rest. Yeah, long and they can see it coming in with a nice 
as he pulled off to number 61 coming around there looking for somebody to hit as well. Extra point try coming up for Upper Perk as they grab an early 6-0 lead. It's down. And he's got it. So David, 4-16. Upper Perk takes a 7-0 lead. We'll be back after this. Here's ground level shot of that touchdown. Simple reverse out, lead play. Henry leads through number 44. And notice how low he got to the ground. Andre got those shoulders square to the line of scrimmage. And I'll tell you what, this game could not start out any better for Coach Moore than what we just saw there in this opening drive. Now, Dave, were you surprised at all anyway when Upper Perk came out only one running play during that whole entire drive? Were you basically looking for them to keep Austin going through that uh, series that they had? Well, I, again, I, you, know, you didn't know what their offensive philosophy and game plan was coming in, Andre. That's why you watch that first drive, and that kind of dictates what happened. Obviously, they wanted to keep the ball away from Michael DeMar Lear, and they feel like they have the hot hand in number 44. They're going to use it. And chewing up the clock as well. As Upper Perk kicks off once again, kickoff goes out of bounds. We'll see, they're gonna take the ball in the 35 or they're gonna make it kick it again. There's Coach Algio. Done a great job for a long, long time yes, over there has. at LC. Fine gentlemen, so always got time to talk to you as well. I was talking to him earlier. And like you said before, we talked about the top of the show. You throw out everything in the last ball game. He said it was a tough struggle the first time these two met, teams met. Only 21 points in the fourth quarter, like the last two or three minutes in the ball game. Things fell apart a little bit for Upper Perk, but they were able to come back. You look at the scoring drive, 14 plays capped off by Craig Austin's one-yard plunge. Austin carried the ball 12 times. Very Higgs big carried the first play of the game. They threw the one pass on the third and five, and other than that, it was all Austin. All Austin. And I like the fact that Coach Algio is making him kick it again. Michael DeMar Lear is a very dangerous guy back there. He's going to make the kick off again. Triple threat, Mar DeMar Lear. Oh, the big boy catches it, big number 83. I think it's and he's rumbling for a nice pickup at about the 38. So LC will have good field position to start their first round as they trail 7-0. Good play by number 54, Yoder, one of the tri-captains. Now we'll see what LC wants to do. Here's their people up front, and we talked about some of their big people, especially Briner, Miller, big guys, Trumbor. They have some size up there. Again, Dennis. I think they have a little bit of an advantage, but Upper Perk has been playing very, very well. They're certainly the hottest playing team right now in the Pac-10. Yes, they are, 4 to go, first quarter action. Right to the, the pass. Martin Lear going right to the air. Has him. Almost picked off. Good defensive play in there by Upper Perk. Boy, number Craig 31 Austin. was right there. Blake Sager was right there. He had six. <laughs> Watch this. They had, they had their signals crossed. They all were fighting for the ball. Number 15 comes across there, too. Stazenko. DeMar Lear kind of floats that ball out there. Oh, right. The last second, Austin gets his hand on it. Sager had it all lined up. He had six points going the other way. If Austin doesn't get his mid on that ball, but Austin has to play to, to play to play. You know, he can't worry about somebody else. He had to play made. He was going to make it. Exactly. It brings up a second down and ten for Lansdale Catholic. Shotgun, Dre. And the Martellier fires has a man down on one knee, incomplete. It bounced anyway. You know, Michael DeMarlier has not thrown the ball as well this year as he had last year. He, you know, he got injured. He hurt that hand against uh, Perk Yellman Valley down at Sinus College that Saturday afternoon. And he really hasn't been throwing the ball well since then. You can see that ball obviously it's bounces. Down. Herman went down Herman. and tried to play that like a catcher on, on the short hop in uh, third and ten. So quite the opposite. Upper Perk comes out their first plays. They're running the football. Other side of the coin, LC starting off by throwing it, trying to catch him off balance a little bit. Well, I said in the top of the show in our pregame, uh, Andre, that I thought that they had to come out with some emotion, some fire, and, and LC certainly has not done that here in the first quarter. The third pass play in this drive is DeMar Lair forced to scramble, stops five. Now we got the interception. That's the Zenko, number 15. And he's driven out of bounds at about the 40 in Lansdale Catholic territory. Well, Michael DeMar Lear made a bad uh, read right there. Very uncharacteristic for Michael DeMar Lear to try to force one. He has some yards. He's on the run, and he badly thrown ball right there. Number 15, Stazenko, knows what to do with it. Picks it off, and he's going the other way. And Upper Perk's in good field position already. They're on the plus side of the 50, Dre. You would think, Dave, that that may be punt return or kickoff return or attitude would have got to him on that one because he did have a little room to maneuver. Yeah, I thought he had some room right now. At least try to get that first down on his own. Bailey underthrown as, as number 26 was breaking through there, Panzola. 
He was open. So Perk takes over. Moya drops back to fire. He's gone. He's gone. Going Ooh. for the home run ball incomplete for his favorite target, Pat Rogers. I like to call Andre. After a big turnover, go for the jugular. There you get a good look at Zenko, the junior, playing free safety out there. He's reading the, the eyes of the quarterback. And Michael DeMarlier made a bad mistake there as he threw that ball poorly. That's great, too. That's another play you use to get the team off balance. You're expecting run. You ran, ran, ran last drive. You're going to kind of expect that, and then you come out with the pass. And had a step or two. Well, they had the play they want. They had a man-on-man -man situation. They had Rodgers and Herman hooked up. Moyer just threw the ball a little bit too far. Now brings they're going up. heavy again here, Dre. Sorry, Dave brings up a second down and 10. Here's their play. That's the play they have not been able to stop yet. And Austin picks up a nice game. Good bit of real estate there. One more time on the illustration interception again. Look how this ball is fluttering through there, though. It's not a nice tight spiral like we've seen Michael DeMar Lear throw and give number 15 a lot of credit for keeping his head up and doing a good job of running after the catch. And you said to yourself like it was right into coverage. Well, a lot of times, you know, a player on the field sees something we may not see back here as you're watching it. So obviously something was developing for DeMar Lear to make that pass instead of keeping it and tucking it in and maybe picking up some yardage on his own. Well, you know, it's always easier from up here, Andre. Mm -hmm. We exactly. have certainly a better vantage point than you do when you're running around on the field. I know that from firsthand playing that position. It's a lot tougher down there on the field. Hand off to Austin on the uh -oh. left side. He's, and gone. he's gone. He's gone. Touchdown, upper perk. To go up 13 0. They found something on the left side, Dave, that they like, and I see a defensive adjustment very quickly for Lansdell Catholic. So there's number 99 doing a great job. Look at that block on Herman. Wow, good block by Henry as he just runs right over number 28, the corner. And that's a walk in the park for number 44, a 32 yard touchdown run. Brings us up to 13 0 as uh, Upper Park. Here it is. Again, they, they put the big tight end in the backfield, number 99. Watch him just wall out. Oh, man, he crushes number 28, Timmy Herman. Tim Herman, a pretty darn good corner in his own right. Gets steamrolled, and I'll tell you right now. Point after is good. LC needs an attitude adjustment, Andre. As they go up to 14 nothing, 255 left in the first quarter. We'll be back with more right after this. Back 14 nothing, upper perk with 2.55 to go in the first quarter. Yep. And up apart. Gives it back to LC. That's Kellogg, and Kellogg number 45. With a nice return, still on his feet. And he's finally brought down about the 40 of LC. From up top, Dre, you can see, the, watch the big hole forming on the left side. Good stalemate out there, number 98, that's all you need. Joe Adam doing a good job. Number 99 finishes it off. Darren Henry finishes off number 28, Tim Henry, or Tim Herman, excuse me. And that's an easy one for Austin. Right there's the MVP, oh, excuse me, that's Darren Henry, but number 44, the MVP in this Pac-10 this year. He has jumped up ahead of Michael DeMar Lear as far as overall value to his team. Like DeMar Lear last year, the MVP. Mm -hmm. Craig Austin this year, without a doubt, the MVP to Pac-10. First and 10 day for LC. Staring at a 14-0 disadvantage, backs in the eye. Handle straight up the middle. Michael DeFlippo picking up a nice game as he gets into upper park territory. Well, that's what LC needs right now. I don't know if this is a wake-up call for them or not, Andre, but if they don't get woken up here shortly, they're going to make sure that they're there. So there's DeFlippo right there taking a straight lead play. Good blocking at the point of attack. Now he's in the secondary. There's our buddy number 15, Stazenko, the guy who made the interception, as well as number 30, Tion Higgs, to finish him off. You can never count LC down today. That's nothing. Oh about no, this absolutely. This game is not oh, over yes. by any stretch of the imagination. But LC better get back into it shortly, or Upper Perk is going to gain a lot more confidence. Straight up the middle. Nice game. Brought down finally at about the 28. You know, Upper Park. you know, Andre, we came over here, and I think we did the game, which was really the turning point for Upper Park, and that was that Pottstown ball game, where Pottstown comes out and just runs the ball all over the place on Upper Park, and somehow they come back and win that ball game. That's the that's the that's really the game that got Upper Park to this point, and I think LC is now reverting back to that, Say, hey, wait a second, what did Pottstown High School do to Upper Park? They ran right at him, they ran right at him, and that's the attitude LC has taken here in this second drive. And have the workhorse to do that, too, in Keating. First and 10 for LC. Straight blast play right up the middle. So your two workhorses, Austin and Keating, will be figuring in quite a bit in today's ballgame. David, we can just see. 
Well, number 31, Blake Sager doing a good job from the secondary coming up. But again, you know, I think LC is going to have to establish himself on the ground first, and that'll free up the passing lanes for Michael DeMar to Lear. She brings up a second down and six. First quarter winding down at the 125 mark. Flying by this first quarter, Andre. Here's the option play. And the Marlin makes something out of nothing. Upper Perk defending it very well, but he still is able to pick up a couple yards on that. Well, Michael DeMarlier is, is a guy that I say, I, he, the first guy really never brings him down. He makes more people miss uh, than anybody in the league this year, especially that first guy. He's not the fastest guy. You don't put him in there with Fax and Dalton as far as flat out right. speed, but he does make people miss. He's very shaft, uh, shifty, he's very crafty, and he knows how to win ball games. Third and two for LC. They're on the move, looking to punch one in. Straight up the middle to Keating. And he should have the first down. And then some. First Long, quarter winding down. Longenecker with the tackle there. But again, they're just trying to, to zone block up front, take the guy head on head, count him off, one, two, three. The guy right in front of you, just block him, get a seam somewhere. And that's the big guy Keating trying to find a hole and get first downs. And that's what they're doing right now with 30 seconds to go in this first quarter. It's like we said earlier too, Dave, the trenches. This is where it all happens in. This is what's going to dictate if you're going to be successful or not. First and 10, 15 seconds to go first quarter. And the Martellaire on the scramble, forced out the pocket, and he's going to take off. And that's probably what he should have done on that last uh, exactly. uh, possession rather than throwing that interception, number 15, Sazenka. Again, it's always easy to look back now and, mm -hmm. and to second guess things. I said it, I take it from first hand. Nothing. Upper Perk came right out to shoot. First couple of series they had, they took it in for a score. Now LC unfazed, coming right back. Nice drive of their own going as we start the second quarter. And there's the first uh, first quarter stats on the Frank Kiss cycle sales. 97 that yardage for Upper Perk is by number 44. He certainly has done his share here in the first. And there's Keating doing his share to get his team back into this ball game. Right up there's the, the big guy. Basically untouched, coming right up the middle, Dave. That's what you need your senior leadership to do. And that's what the big guy, if he's going to be a Division One prospect, he better put this team up on his shoulders and carry him. And that time, he had a walk in the park, similar to what Austin had on his last touchdown run, as his offensive line did a great job of walling off and making a big hole. Good One block, short move right there. Right up the middle. Sizenko has a chance, but not enough. Okay, here's now LC with their trickery again. you got to be ready for this stuff. At all times. I'm gonna run a play out of this. I'd like to see him run a play out of it. Well, they're gonna bring him back. Big point here by Keating. It's up. No and good. It's no good, Dave. 11.55 to go on the Norco Motor scoreboard. Upper Perk 14, Lansdale Catholic 6. We'll be back after this. And 55 to go in the second quarter as LC failed on their attempt to complete their PAT on that one. But again, that was a lot of Keating in that drive. DeMar Lear making a couple good decisions, tucking the ball under his shoulder and running with it. But big number 43 says, I got to do something here to get us back into this ball game. Real nice drive. That's the kind of counter punch that you need, Andre, when you got a heavyweight bout going. Exactly. You better punch it and you better receive some counter punches and you better be ready to return them. Nice crowd on hand for today's ball game. See, look at the weather overcast as the kickoff. There's the big guy, 99. From the upper park. Oh, he's looking like he could run in there as a tailback. Nice couple of moves to bring the ball up to about the 37th, 38th, where upper park will take over. And there's a 14-6 lead. But again, good field position for the Indians. You know, they, they certainly are not have to worry about getting the ball out of their own end zone and uh, own end at all. They've really had good field position. We'll see if Coach Moore wants to see if he can put one up again. See if he gets man-on-man -man with Rodgers and see if he goes one-on-one. -on -one. You know you're not going to shut Rodgers out forever. You know his number's going to be called soon. Okay, here to go to this heavy formation right now. They're going trips to the right side, single back, and here's the counter gap. And Austin comes over right side for a couple. Still, He's still going. Not down. Still He's going. not down. Whistle hadn't blown. See, that's the kind of stuff that leaders are made out of right there, Andre. You know, Craig Olson doesn't have to be a vocal guy. He doesn't have to be a rah-rah guy. All he's got to do is say, hey, look, fellas, watch my performance. Watch my effort. You can see he's not down yet. 
There's no way his knee is touched, not even close to touching. Give the LC secondary a lot of credit for staying with the play because if they weren't there, he's going for 10, 15 more. But they always tell you, keep the legs churning, keep them going. And Austin does have six 200 yard games to his credit as well. Last ball game, 36 carries, so he does do a good job as the workhorse for Upper Perk. Well, it doesn't look like this wet field has hindered him at all. He must be a mutter. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh fumble, I think he does have it though, baby. Just pounce back on it. Well, number 35, Mike, Mark Brunner was right there for LC. Watch number 35, the outside linebacker. He reads the play, steps up, nobody blocks him. He's right there to hit Austin. Very fortunate for the Indians to retain possession because Brunner was right there in the hole. You know, David, you have a very good point, you know, for the novices at home. This is not a ball game. We're not a, just coming here and just looking at a play. You do have assignments. You do have to read plays. This game is not easy to just walk into the field and play. As you mentioned, read the play, made the stick. Well, again, Upper Perk uh, really practicing on a short week because they had to play O.N.J. Roberts on Monday. So they lost a day there. So, you know, they're really playing off a short week, and it hasn't shown so far. Home run ball incomplete. Boy, number 82 was out there also. Cotteridge was out there ahead of the field. The big six-foot, four-inch <clears throat> wide out had a step on L.C. And it looks like we're going to see the first punt of the ball game. At 10 to 15 to go. You know, David, you yourself, as you mentioned before, you know, also being a defensive coordinator as well, when you do play a ball club, just because you play them once does not mean they're going to come out here and do the same thing. You have to have your game plan tailored week in and week out to be prepared for no matter who you play, regardless of how many times. Ooh, high snap. Does get it off. And it's going to be bounced and fielded at about the 24 in LC territory. Chris Weichel fielding it down for Upper Perk. Norco Motor scoreboard, Upper Perk 14, Lansdale 6. And Upper Perk had a screen off pretty well. Number 53 made the play. Jake Holman did a good job of flashing. His, uh, his assignment on that play was to take the pitch man, and, and he was right there ready for D. Filippo. Okay, good look at one of the tri captains, Dre. Okay, let me ask you, Dave, you get a ball game like this. We met before, you took the first game now. As far as playing up against each other, do you have this scenario where it's okay, you guys aren't going to beat us this time? How much as far as that confidence level go away from the game and get down to the part about, okay, you can't take us, we're going to take you in that aspect? Well, that's what I said. That I think that first drive was so important for Upper Perth because they had to do the mental aspect of the game is they haven't beaten LC the last two times they played them. They have to be able to prove to themselves that they can play with this team, and they certainly have done that here in the first half. As LC gets closer to a first, may have it already. Nice pass play from DeMar DeLear. DeMar DeLear back in the shotgun formation again. Here you can see the whole field. You can see it as well. Watch the, the, the pattern develop. And all they do is hit the big fullback out of the backfield. Not real good tackling that time in the secondary for Upper Perk as LC is able to pick up a first down. And LC back on the move again. First and 10 with a 9.04 to go in the second quarter on the bottom end of a 14-6 upper perk score. As the Martin Lear keeps it himself, Dave, and takes you straight up the middle for a nice pickup. Again, DeMar Lear, as you mentioned, Andre, is that triple threat. He, he can pass the ball, he can run it, and he also plays the defense. But that time he did a good job making a good decision. This game is going to come down to the decision-making process, and, and both coaches have pretty good quarterbacks in there for that job. You know, Moyer's been around for a long time. He's fouled his pop for a long time. He's been out on his practice field since he's been six or seven years old. And Michael DeMar Lear, you know that story, the family history there as well. So they certainly have the two guys in the position to make decisions that they want. Second and three, Keating goes up the middle for a tough pickup for a couple. Dave, how much is that of a nightmare for a defensive coordinator when you got not only to worry about a featured running back, but also the quarterback can give you fits? Well, that's, that's certainly another aspect of the game that you've got to be ready for. There's going to be an official timeout, timeout for a yeah, first down measurement here, Dre. And officially Keating now with five carries for 38 yards as well, so he's starting to pile up some yards. As we look at the measurement. The styling room, all day, popular spot. Hairstyles for the whole family. Now, they're located at 20 North Evans Street in Pottstown. Now, they're celebrating 10 years of service. Stop in and see Paul Strauss and the entire staff at the styling room. Give them a call, 970-2088. Tell them that we sent you over there. We'll give you a free lollipop, maybe even a nickel for the 
parking Little. meter across the street, Andre. Well, don't tell us, Andre. They don't lock the door. Andre, <laughs> who, what? Goodbye. Third and short, Andre. The length Third of football. One. Quarterback sneak here by DeMartelier. You called it. Oh, oh stop. Right, right at right the now, line of scrimmage. Be a tough call. Chris Good. Weichel. It's going to be where they place the football. Uh, DeMar Lear, to his credit, trying to stretch out there at the last second. Boy, I tell you right now, that's a good play by the middle guy inside. Who is that, number 76, McClusker? Or, I'm sorry, Slonick or Slonick are doing a great job. He just moved that center right back into DeMar Lear's lap. Fortunately for LC, they were able to pick up the first down, but it was very close. 7.36 to go in the second quarter, 14-6, up a perk on top. Slonaker at six foot three, 210 pounds, doing a good job of controlling the middle. Fumble, Fumble. by kidding. LC looks as though they've recovered it. Oh, they give it to Upper Perk. Well, I tell you what, Upper Perk, the omen is playing certainly the more inspired football here early this afternoon. Ground level shot, there's the big fullback inside. Number 54 crashes down hard. That's Nick Yoder again doing a great job, and there's the pile up, and that ball is upper perky omens going the other way. Great field position exactly. again for the Indians. It's like Darren Henry got his hand in there, number 99 to smack it out. And there's the big play. There's the initial hit. There's the spin. I think that's 98 from 98. the other side. Joe Adam doing a good job of coming in there. And somebody be able to outfought Keating for that football. And Austin met at the line of scrimmage and brought down hard by Keating. Number 72 is his brother, Scott Keating, the young freshman, doing a good job over here on the left defensive side as well, plugging up that hole. Weather, no bad weather. Good ball game from the outset. Both ball clubs, like you said, like a heavyweight match. Throwing haymakers, throwing bombs, is who can land the hardest. And right now, but Perk is landing a 14-6 right hook. Well, we have Michael Moore and the big guy, <laughs> Evander, the going tonight. Going Sweep and stop nicely. And there's Keating again. Again, you He's know what happens is he has, to, he has to credit his defensive lineman. What their job is to do, Andre, is to keep the offensive lineman off the legs and out of the body of Keating so he can go sideline to sideline to make the tackles. That's the way defenses are set up. Yeah, they made a very good point, too, about how your big guys come in and make the big plays like Keating on defense for LC so far, often on offense for upper part. And that's what you need. And now maybe the other players that can filter down, give them a little emotion as we get a timeout. Oh, okay. oh, by oh, Perk with 6.13 to go. On the Narco Motor scoreboard, it's Upper Perk 14, Lanzo Catholic 6. We'll be back right after this. 15-6, Upper Perk leading. 6.13 to go in the second quarter, coming off of a timeout. And big number 44 is sitting on the bench talking to the training staff and maybe the doctors. I said, I mentioned earlier the fact that he gets himself so pumped up and so hyper for these games. He has a, a, a difficult time keeping things down. He, get, he hyperventilates a little bit. So now the, the, the young sophomore, number 30, Tion Higgs, is in there, filling some big shoes of Craig Austin. Third and nine, though, we'll probably see the ball put up in the air. And you're right, Dave, as Moore drops back the pass and batted away. Nice defensive play there from LC. It's Tim Herman. Tim Herman. Yep. Well, Rogers is a possession type receiver. He's got to get a little bit more separation here. Moyer and he have been hooking up for a long time. Timing route. Moyer throws a nice tight spiral, but that's just a super a defensive defense. play by Herman. Exactly. Notice how he come across with the offhand and He's, a, he's a, an all-league type player. That's why he makes those kind of plays, the six-foot, 180-pound senior. Forcing up a perk to punt on fourth and seven, and they get it away. And the Marley is going to field it at about his own 10. And he's brought down about the 18. So with 5.58 to go in the second quarter, North Motor scoreboard, up a perk, leading Lanzo Catholic, 14 to six. We'll be back after this. Keating took the ball on the left side and picked up a nice gain, LC. Well, again, LC is trying to establish itself on the ground. The success they've had has been by number 43, Keating. He's running the ball very, very well. We talked about it. Uh, going into that series, he had five carries for 38 yards. He picks up some more there. Anytime you get five or more on first down, that opens up your whole playbook. Brings Here's the option. Second and four, the Martin Lair going off a right tackle. And Jake Hallman coming up to make the hit for Upper Perk. 
They've played the option very well. That time, Hall uh, Hallman has quarterback responsibilities on the option, and he jumps up and tackles number 13 at their very short game. Now they have a third and three. One thing you don't rattle LC, they stay within the framework of their game plan, even though they fell behind early 14-0. They haven't came out to throw the ball all over the place. They still stick within the game plan, and they do have much success with that. They got a score, cut it down to 14-6, and six, and once again facing a third and three. Right up the middle to Keating, he has the first down and more. Well, that's senior, that's senior leadership, Andre. That's what does that. You know, they've had guys who've been around the program for a while, so they don't get rattled. But that's who you go to, Dave. That's who you go to. Well, here's the play, Andre. They spread to the, spread the field. They go sideline to sideline, and Keating basically gets tripped up by his own offensive lineman. He picks up about 10 more yards as he was in deep into the secondary. Fast moving first half down to 436 in the second quarter. First and 10 for LC. Well, let's see if they start going to a, more of a two-minute type offense with only four minutes to go. There they go, straight hand off again. I think Coach Algio sees something he likes. It's working. He's going to stick with it. Keating picks up a nice game. A couple new players into the ball game for, for Upper Perk. Number 54, Yoder, comes in. See if they go more to a, a run-type defense. There's Coach Algio right there pacing the sidelines. Second down and three. Okay, and they're spreading the field. See if they go to the fullback again. Yep. Once again, up the middle for the first down and more as Keating enters in the upper park territory, picking up a first down along the way. Well, I think Keating's taking this as a personal challenge right now because Austin is having so much success. He says, okay, I don't want number 44 across the other side of the ball to get all the success, and he's going to be the guy that they're all going to be talking to after the game. Now, all of a sudden, Keating's making his own statement. Just right in the trench blocking as well up front for LC, enabling King to pick up a nice game. That was his 10th carry, Andre, for 71 yards. So he's got a big yard per carry average. And make that 11. Well, 11 for about 75 now. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he's picking them up and putting them down to big fullback. Not game-breaking speed, but certainly good enough speed at the high school level to make yardage up the middle. Clock winding down here in the second quarter. Upper Perk came out, as you said, emotionally charged, and all of a sudden, LC turned the tables on them somewhere, putting together a nice long drive as well. Well, you know, that happens a lot of times when you come out so excited in that first quarter, you had that letdown type feeling in the second, uh, second quarter emotionally, and they got to come up and make a big play here. Here's a play action pass. Martin Lear looking, and he's going to decide to take it on his own as he scampers down the sideline, knocked out of bounds. And that stops the clock, Andre. I mean, that's a heady play. He didn't make a good decision in the first quarter. There he makes a good decision as he tucks the ball. He runs play action. He's trying to find somebody going on the post corner, but Upper Perk did a good job of jamming the receiver at the line of scrimmage. Now DeMar Lear looks over the field, has no one open, heading for the sidelines. He does not cut back into the middle of the field. He gets out of bounds so he can stop the clock. That's the problem we were talking about before. If you get a good running quarterback like DeMar Lear, not only do you have to respect the running prowess of Keating, but also when DeMar Lear is in trouble, to respect that aspect of him coming out the backfield and picking up a big game. First and 10 for all. Screen, screen, screen. screen. Coming over to the left side. Oh, Austin with a great play. play. That's Brian Foy, number 44. They set him up on the screen out here on the left side. And Austin's showing some of his two-way capabilities here. DeMar Lear sets it up. He has all the defensive linemen. Other than Austin, Foy's going to pick up some uh, some yards here. But watch number 44 flash into your screen. Good tackle. And makes a good ankle tackle. Good to see Austin back in the ball game as well. 2.25 to go in the second quarter. Upper Perk nursing a 14-6 lead. But LC on the move at the 35 of Upper Perk. Straight blast right up the middle to Keating. Dips over to the left side and picks up a nice piece of real estate. Well, now it comes down to clock management, too, Andre. Two minutes to go in the first half. Here's the straight ahead, as you mentioned. Straight blast play. And they're opening up some holes for Keating. As he's now closing in on the 100-yard mark here already in the first half. Upper Perk changed some defensive players here. They want to get the right personnel in. Third and one. Keating, why am I not surprised on that play, Dave? Right up the middle. This guy right here was a heck of a ball player, still is a heck of a ball player. You know, he's one of one of my favorite guys because of the fact he has that big W for winner on his chest. He finds ways to win ball games. Michael DeMarlier capping off a great career down in uh, Lansdale. 
We'll see him on uh, in hoops shortly. Exactly. Dick right and I will be ready corner. to do all that. Boy, I tell you, yeah. Starts early this year, right after Thanksgiving. We'll be doing some hoops. First quarter one, first half of the winding down, Dave. With a minute 23 to go. DeMarley dropping back to pass. And he's forced out of the pocket. Oh, good play. That's number 76, Sloanacre, the guy who really did a good job on that quarterback sneak, blasting in there. Kind of played the, the role of the spy. You know, they had to put that spy in there when Randall Cunningham was doing his thing exactly. in the NFL. Now with all kinds of good running Lando quarterbacks, you've got to keep that guy in the middle who just kind of doesn't rush the passer, but he's going to spy him wherever he goes. Good job right there by Sloanacre. All right, Dave, Kiss Cycle. Now, you need a place to store your motorcycle this winter. Weathering the weather, Andre, <laughs> exactly. as I said, on Judgment Day. Here it is November 8th, 1997. Yes, it's a nice crowd, as we yeah. can say. Especially on this side. This side has a real nice crowd. Lansdale traditionally doesn't bring a whole lot of people to away games, but they got a nice crowd. There's a guy we've been talking about, the 6'3", 210-pound senior lineman, really doing a good job. Slonik are playing very well here in this first half. Yes, he is. You have to have somebody who can control the middle. you got to neutralize that center, control the middle. Keating is gaining some yards, but not right up the gut. He's going off tackle a little bit further. Minute eight to go in the second quarter. LC on the move, looking at a second down and seven. They still have two timeouts remaining, so we'll see what their philosophy is here. They try to run a quick flanker screen out there to Tim Herman. Herman doing a great job. That ball is a little bit high from DeMarlier. Again, he's not throwing that crisp, tight spiral that we've seen him throw. I, I think that hand is still bothering him. He can't grip the ball real well. Again, look at that thing fluttering out there. And a mm -hmm. great catch by Herman. Picks up one block, but there he makes somebody miss. Good pursuit, too, from the upper park defense. And on the that clock's play. running down to 44 ticks. Keating gets the handoff. They got to call timeout now. Timeout now. Stop. You can see Coach Alger waving the hands. Okay, now is it with 37 seconds to go. LC on the move. They will pick up the first down, however. And Coach Alger will go out there to talk to grandson Michael. Say, look, Michael, we got to get something on the board here. We're doing a great job of driving. we got to cap this drive off mm -hmm. with some points. Exactly. And don't forget about the big band dance night with Arlen Sailor's new big band. That's Friday, November 14th at 8.30 at Gilbertsville Fire Company. Tickets are $10, and they are available at Schaefer's Restaurant and also at Mess Candies. Got to see all in Sailor's Big Band. Great music, in the mood, all that good stuff. You know, the Shaw Classics, the Dorseys. 37 seconds to go in the second quarter. Well, the upper perk cheerleaders trying to urge on their defensive troops here to put some kind of defensive stand up, try to keep LC out of the end zone. Exactly. LC missed that leaves. critical extra point, so if they're going to go for a tie here, they're going to have to try to go for two, Andre. If they would get a score, I, mean, I don't want to get ahead of myself. That they're, you know, it's not certainly not a given. They still have about 15 yards to go. Talking to Dave Devlin up here, Demar Lear picking up some yards as well. He has close to 40 yards between he and he and uh, uh, Keating. They have over 100 yards in rushing offense here in the first half. First and 10, Dave, as you said, 37 seconds to operate, some time to do something with it. Here's the option Water play. There. Very close, gets inside the five. And they certainly have enough time with 30 seconds. See if he, see if he spikes the ball right now to stop the clock. No huddle. Upper Perk trying to get some substitutes in there. That's gonna be tough for them to do that and get their defense call. And the clock has stopped, too. Here we go, now we're starting with 23 seconds left. Keating. Nice defensive time stand out now. by They have Perk. one more. They got to call their last time out now. And they did. Here's the option play from up top in the bucket. You can see the whole play develop. DeMar Lear doing a good job making the decision. You know, it's tough to run an option when you got the fullback out there as the pitch man because he's not going to outrun anybody to the corner. You know, Keating is a good guy between the tackles. Excuse me, Andre, but he does not have breakaway speed to get to the corner. DeMar Lear recognized that, tucked it up, and got as much as he could. You're right, Dave. Almost a little more easier to defend too instead of facing a good quick back and or running back, tailback. Wings to go, Davis, about that time. Now, if you're in the mood, we've got the food. Wings to go into the end zone right now, Andre. Got They've it. got to call two plays, though, with no more timeouts left. There's 17 seconds. There's enough time to get two plays off if they're not successful on this first one. But everybody in the huddle's got to know that. You've got to get up off the pile. Upper Perk, on the other hand, has got to lay on the, the offensive, you know, linemen and stuff. Exactly. Lay on them, not allow them to get back up. So if they don't make it here, they can't allow them to run another play. Second down, goes Martin Lair. 
going to keep it and take it in. I tell you, 98 came through for Upper Perk, had a shot at him, but once again, that's the threat the Mortelier possesses as a good running quarterback as well as he takes it in. Well, you know, like I said, he always makes that first guy miss. Mm -hmm. Again, he's not a flat-out sprinter, but he is a, a crafty guy. He's very shifty back there, and he slashes right into the end zone and picks up that big, uh, that big touchdown. And there it is one more time. As you mentioned, number 98, Joe Adam, the 211-pound senior, came crashing in from his defensive end position. But DeMar Lear makes that first guy miss, made a couple other guys miss, and like I said, now they have to go for two because they missed that critical extra point on the first touchdown. Okay, there 14 they go motion 12. Now. They're going to flood the right side. DeMar Lear almost loses his footing. Now he's going to keep it clear field in front of him, and he puts it in for the two-point conversion. Well, I remember he did that last year. He ran right into Tommy Ramsey's camera down there, did a little dance for him as he scored mm -hmm. a big touchdown late in that game against Upper Perk last year. Here they're going to go flood to the right side. Everybody gets caught inside. There's number 98, Joe Adam, going with his coverage. Now he's going to get a pickup block right here. Watch number 75 steps right up. Boom. There's Briner and DeMar Lear. Too much speed beats number 53, Jake Holman, to the corner. And we have a tie ball game. And again, there's the guy that I talked about so many times. All he does is win ball games. Exactly. Heads up played by DeMar Lear. Well, 13 seconds ago, I'm sure Keating's going to kick a squibber. He's not going to give uh, Upper Perk a chance to try to bust one and really change the complexion of this ball game. You mentioned Upper Perk came out so well in that first quarter. It is dominated play, and LC, very businesslike, very professional, knew what they had to do, Andre, and got right back in this ball game as they knocked the score at 14. Didn't deviate from the game plan, kept the nice drives going with some nice runs from Keating. And the Martelier, of course, can always mess up a second there. You never know what he's going to do in trouble is to get the squib kick from LC, and Upper Perk falls on it. That's number 80, Rogers. He's certainly a sure-handed guy to fall on that ball. And I'm sure Coach Moore is just going to have uh, his son turn around and give the ball to Austin and say, okay, get what you can out of it. Hold on to it with two hands. We'll go in there. We'll make our adjustments, mm -hmm. and we'll come back out and see who wins the ball game in the second half. You can see the scoring drive, 16 plays, 82 yards, eating up some good clock, too, at 732. And again, that's not a bad idea to keep the ball away from Upper Park because both offenses have shown that they can move the football here this afternoon. You're right, Dave, with 11 seconds left. Let's go trips this way and fullback dive. Oh, no, they're going to throw the ball. Look at Coach Moyer. Moyer He's got he's somebody, too. Look at this. Look at this. Rogers. Oh, oh, man. At the half last a, moment. A half a second late. If, if Jeffrey could have thrown that ball two strides earlier, they had number 82 wide open. I can't believe that LC would not be in some sort of prevent defense area. Right. How can you let somebody get behind you? I mean, number 82, Cotteris is all alone out there, and that's just a super play Good by day. the senior, Tim Herman. Wow. If, Herm if, if Moyer puts more air into that football and throws it as far as he can, that's six points for upper perk. And had a step on him, too. Four seconds left, time for one more. And Moore again drops back. They score it all. In the coverage, incomplete. It'll do it for us here in the first half. The Norco Motor scoreboard, Lansdale Catholic, Upper Perk. We're tied at 14, PIAA District 1 playoff action. The ways and first half stats here on the Frank Kiss uh, stat sheet, Andre. Again, Lansdale Catholic jumping up in that second quarter, really putting stats on the board. Again, stats don't do much for me other than, you know, at the final uh, point of the ball game as far as points. But LC did a good job rushing the football. That was mostly Keating. He and DeMar Lear did a nice job in that second quarter. Uh, all Austin in the first quarter. Upper person have to try to find a little bit more way to be consistent with the football here in the second half. Seems kind of unusual to see four yards gain in the passing attack for Upper Park, knowing how a good balanced team that they are with the run and the pass. Well, I think uh, when, when Jeff Moyer looks at these tapes, he's going to look at that end of the first half there when he had big number 82, Cotteritz ride open down the middle, and he just didn't put enough air under. He threw it too much on the line rather than putting the ball up in the air, letting Cotteritz run into it. He'd love to have that toss back. How about a breezy day as we had a shot of the flag blowing. Overcast, but didn't seem to bother neither team as we get on the way for the second half. Up a per kicking off the LC field at about their 15. And the Marta Lair. Whoa, good hit. That's the second time number 54, Yoder's really going down hard under the kickoff and made a big tackle. Teeing off on the Marla as he gets to have a player down for up a perk. Yeah, somebody got their bell rung out there. You can't see his number as of yet. 
14-14, we're all knotted up here for the second half. So adjustments being made, David's got a second. As you see both teams, you can see it again. There's DeMar Lear going up the middle real tough. And there's Yoder right there on top, number 54. And I couldn't see who was down on the bottom. I don't know if he just got the wind knocked out of him or what, but uh, something is part of the game. We hate to see it, Andre, yes. but it's, it's a part of a, of a contest. Anxious to see what kind of adjustments were made at halftime. I'd like to have been in the fly on the walls, listening to both yeah. coaches. I'm sure Coach Algio, you know, he coached me in the Montgomery County All-Star game. He's a vocal kind of a guy. He's an emotional guy. He'll go up there and rip you up and down a little bit, try to get you fired up, and, and that's a good way of getting that done. As you look at number 88, John Durr, the junior tight end, uh, 6'1", 190. I think he's going to be all right. As I said, he got his bell rung there a little bit. He's not exactly sure which way he's going. I'm buzzing, coach. But <laughs> he didn't know which, which get bench up, he was going. Yeah, he's going to yeah. be okay. He's, he he's runs a off the kid. field. Yep. You always like to see that. But like you said, they've also, as far as the adjustments are going to make swing, both teams had success running off the left side of each other. Holes are being opened up, and both teams are very successful in the run as LC comes up with a first and ten. Well, LC's going heavy to the left side. They have a tight end and a double slot over there. They're going to give the ball to Keating that way. Picks Keating up a had couple. a big second quarter, Andre. He picked up a lot of yards. Just talking to Dave Devlin at halftime, he's closing in on the 100-yard mark. DeMar Lear with about 50 yards. Keating with about 85 yards now. we got an LC player shaking up a little bit as well. Looks like that's number 75 for LC. John that's the Briner. big guy, Briner, yeah. He's only a junior, so that's bad news for the Pac-10. The big number 75 is going to be back again next year, walling some people off. You know, David, it seemed like it was a first half of quarters. First quarter belonging to Upper Perth, then LC coming back and taking control in the second quarter. Well, it was an emotional lift for Upper Perk in that first quarter to come out and start real well, but they kind of the, the air out of their balloon kind of burst a little bit and, and went away when LC came back very workmanlike in that second quarter to get right back in this ball game. Oh, he's open. To the air. Oh, just overthrew him. That's number 45, Kellogg. It's going deep for Kellogg. Both quarterbacks just a fashion off on both their attempts to go long. Well, Kellogg's a young sophomore who's come on strong in the second part of this season. He wasn't playing a whole lot in the beginning of the year. They were throwing the ball predominantly to Foy, number 44, and Herman, number 28. But Kellogg worked real hard in practice and caught the eye of well, Just on the way in the third quarter, we're knotted up at 14-14. District 1 playoff action here at Upper Park. Third and eight. Now wow, third and eight, they're going to the fullback. That's kind of a conservative call for LC. With Michael DeMar Lear back there, Coach Algio certainly is, is not usually conservative. There was a conservative call to the big fullback up the middle, and Upper Perk causes a punt here on the first possession. There's number 53 again with another tackle, Jay Coleman. He has played very, very well on both sides of the football here this afternoon for the Tribe. Bringing up a fourth and five for LC. Looks like the wind and the, and the rains are starting to kick up here a little bit. You see some umbrellas starting to blossom. You see Herman, number 28. Punter for LC gets a high boom. Drops down to 30 and takes a LC bounce as it rolls out of bounds at about the 24 where Upper Perk will operate. North Komodo score, but Upper Perk 14, LC 14. We'll be back right after this. 14 up a perk with their first possession of the second half. Try to run play off a left tackle. And number 32, Fitzsimmons did a good job off his cornerback position of staying home and stopping Austin for a very short game. Looks like upper perk's going to come out and try to establish the run game again. Second down and nine for upper perk. Moyer's going to keep it. Tip drill, tip drill. Yeah. There's <laughs> the tip drill. Number 44, Foy, was the closest guy to that. From up top, Andre, here you get a look at it. Play action pass. Try to get LC going one way. Good defense right there. As LC was all around the ball. That's actually number 99, Darren Henry, who got a hand on that football. I think he was going to the second receiver who was behind Henry. They were very fortunate that ball was not picked off as number 44 as Brian Foy was right there. You're right, third and nine for Upper Park. Moore drops back again. Goes for the home run ball one more time. This one's picked off this time by LC. That's number 44, Foy. I mentioned they have a lot of interceptions back here. DeMar Lear, Herman, and Foy really played the pass well. 
and Moyer throws that ball up in the coverage. Again, look where number 44 is. He's got perfect inside position. Number 82, Cotteris does a good job of trying to come in there and bat the ball away, but you give Foy a lot of credit as he comes down with that big interception. Now LC is trying to take over to Big Mo. Moyer got crunched, too, on that pass play as well. 14-14, we're tied, 9.41 to go. Third quarter is LC. And see, I think this is where LC has a little bit of the advantage, uh, Andre, is they have a lot more experience in big ball games, in playoff games, than Upper Perk. There's a pitch back to Filippo. He goes around right tackle, picks up a couple. There's number 15 again, who's had a pretty good first half for them. That's John Stazenko. 200 pounder back here in the secondary. We had a big interception in that second possession of the first quarter. Comes up with a good tackle on DeFilippo. DeFilippo is a guy that often gets overlooked right. because they have DeMar Lear, because they have Keating, because they have Herman, because they have Panzula. And all of a sudden, uh, DeFilippo comes up and he'll not score, uh, get some uh, yards against you. Those are guys that will kill you too, Dave. Yep. The ones you overlook is you get the option from DeMar to Lear. Nice getting very close to the first down will be OC. Here's DeMar Lear with his little pitch back to DeFilippo. <clears throat> he throws that little spiral back there. And again, on the, on the next play, uh, DeMar Lear runs the option and throws a two-handed chest pass out there to DeFilippo. So I don't know if his hand's bothering him again yeah. or not, but you know he, he is not, it does not look smooth handling the football. Took a shot, too, when he got rid of it. Third and one for Lansdale Catholic. Big guy. to go. I don't know. That's going to be a close, be close spot. Although Double, that second effort might have gotten it, Dre. Upper Perk defending it very well. Yep, and there you can see. Didn't respond from the official, and they got the first down and continuing their drive. This is a big possession for both sides right now. I, I told Dave Devlin, I think this is going to be about a 28-21 ball game. Mm -hmm. I don't know who's going to come up with on the top end, but whoever plays the better defense here in the second half is definitely going to win this ball game. And it looks right now that LC is starting to pick up the momentum a little bit more. Right at midfield, first and 10 for LC. And the Mortelier rolling out to his right, looking for a receiver. Decides to keep a nice block. That was number 82 to tight end. Boyle comes back with a crackback block yeah. on big number 77, Toby Cole. Here he comes right at you in your living room. You make the play. Again, DeMar Lear is making better decisions here in the second part of the ball game. Had that bad interception early in the first quarter. Since then, he, he's been on top of his ball game. 39-yard line. Down and four for LC. Marching further into a preferred territory. Uh-oh, Dave. I just thought about something. Now, you guys have been doing pretty good with this. You make the call, okay? <laughs> yeah, we're doing pretty good. That's right. I'm over, man. I'm over the season. <laughs> this will be my first crack at it. That's coming up real soon. Second and four. Oh, wishbone option. Fumble, wow. and number Perk has it. Wow, look at Rodgers coming up with that football. Again, you can see it on that replay, the Martin Lear, again, I don't know if his hand is hurting. This is a strange option. They're bringing the, the motion man back, and they're going to run the option that way. And Herman just takes his eye off the football right there and drops it. Did it seem like he threw it like with his right hand instead yeah, he of his did, left? Yeah, he did, rather his left hand. You know, when you're taught to run the option, when you're going left, you right. got to be able to flip the ball out with your left hand. That time, he throws a little shovel pass out there to Timmy Herman. Boy, Upper Perk dodges a big bullet there on an interception by Foy. Now they have the football looking to put something on the board themselves. Big break for Upper Perk. And Austin gets the carry. And he punches his way up for a couple. Okay, they Pottstown Honda presents You Make the Call. Now, during a Crusader field goal attempt, an Indian lineman gets into the Crusader backfield and deflects the kick. The ball travels downfield where it is muffed by an Indian and recovered by a Crusader. What happens next? I'm putting something on well, TV. The, the tape. referee blows the whistle and crosses his arms up over top of his head. That's what happens next. <laughs> and I don't know what he's going to call, <laughs> but he's going to blow the whistle. I got to see that again. And say, Woo! <laughs> Second and six for Upper Park. Well, I'm going to make a stab at this one. Austin. Not much. Took 30 yards to pick up two. <laughs> and look at DeMar Lear. He's under the bench. That's good play right there. <laughs> That's what's fun about playing in the mud right there, Andre. It's yeah. sliding like that. It's more fun in practice than in games because you don't like to see games determined by muddy field. But right. watch DeMar Lear riding right out of here. Safe. That's right. Oh, wrong sport. 6.23 <laughs> to go. 
third quarter. We still not it up at 14. Well, there's a big third down call for Coach Moyer. Now they go trips one side. They're going trips, trips to the right side. Single receiver here, solo back. Third and five in Austin. Barreling up the middle for a couple. And he's going to be short. Okay, Dave, once again, you make the call during a Crusader field goal attempt. An Indian lineman gets into the Crusader backfield and deflects the kick. Now the ball travels downfield where it is muffed by an Indian and recovered by a Crusader. What happens next? Well, I think the whole key is the fact that, that an upper perk uh, guy, after he blocks it, they muff the, they muff the ball. That, that changes possession, and then if LC falls on it, then it's going to be LC's, LC's ball. ball. If I they would have just blocked that. it, and then it would have gone down the field, it would have been their ball. Wow. Yeah, good defense pursued by upper perk. And we'll be back with the score tied at 14 on the Norco Motor scoreboard. The best time of year to buy a new Jeep or Eagle is right now at Norco Jeep Eagle in Pottstown. The selection is great and the prices are low as Norco Jeep Eagle is holding their end of model year clearance sale. This sporty Wrangler SE 4x4 is ready for you right now for only $1.99 a month for 39 months. Or lease this luxurious and loaded Grand Cherokee Laredo 4x4 for only $3.19 a month for 36 months. The model year end clearance sale ends soon at Norco Jeep Eagle, just one block off Route 100 in Pottstown. We're back, Dave, and DeMar Lair on a quarterback keeper scampers his way over right tackle and picks up a nice game. Well, they're getting a lot of yardage out of the, out of the option play. Mm -hmm. There's the fake inside the fullback. DeMar Lear sees that there's an opening, and he's going to take the ball. Man, he, he lives dangerously. He likes to hold that ball out there loosely, mm -hmm. but that time he does a good job picking up a first down. Dave, I'm going to agree with you on that. You made the call. I think the Crusaders will get that ball right where that muff play was down, and they'll get a first and ten. If it's that, enough for first down. Excuse me, Andre. Ahead, that was DeMar Lear's 10th carry for 68 mm -hmm. yards. 5-16 to go in the third quarter. We're still not at that 14. First and 10 for LC. A little movement there from the upper perk defensive line, but he got back. Good stick at the line of pursuit there by upper perk. Here's the answer, Dre. It is the Crusaders ball, yep. first and ten. Yeah, I, I finally got one. Hello. I, I got to get you up here to, to read these to me. You know, Al puts the jinx on me. Uh, <laughs> he, he puts on his Bucktown booster jacket and gives me the double <laughs> whammy so I can't get him right when we make the call. We got to bring, bring you up here because you're a non-biased guy, Andre. That's well, what thank I like. you very much, Dave. That's it. I got Four, one. Four, one. At least I didn't go over for the season. There you <laughs> I go. waited to the playoffs. <laughs> when the cream rises when to the count. That's it, right, yeah. when it counts. Pass play from, oh, oh look at this. The look at this. Fumble, upper perk all over. Austin recovers it. Well, that's two in a row for Timmy Herman. The sure-handed guy, one, right. of the, one of the best pair of hands that we've seen in the Pac-10, in the history of the Pac-10. Two straight plays, he fumbles the football. He's just not securing that ball. Yeah. And upper perk doing a great job getting to the football. There is no white shirts in that picture, Andre. It's all blue around that ball. Great field position. Well, you know what? LC's defense is starting to stiffen. The last seven carries that number 44 has had, he's only gained 12 yards. So they're starting to zero in on number 44. These are great second half adjustments. They gotta make. They gotta find somebody else who's gonna score here. Oh, there's Boy, the out. The there's he's the out. No, he's got him. He's open. Got him. Down about the 12. Nice pass play. Well, you know what? I love that Pat call. Rogers. Let's go pick on the guy who just fumbled the football. Uh -huh. He might be uh, licking his wounds a little bit. He might be pouting. Let's go, go right at number 28. And there's the out and up move by Rodgers. And that ball has a lot of air under it and allows Rodgers to run under it. That time, Moyer did a much better job of letting his receiver adjust to the pass and catch the football. But you had that feeling, Dave. You weren't going to shut out Rodgers all game. You know somewhere along the line, he was got to get the ball in his hands. First and 10 for Upper Park. They're on the move. Now the run opens up a little bit. Austin with a nice carry, picking up close to five or six off that left side again. And that time he gets the better out of, that, of the confrontation with number 43, Keating. If we have a replay on that run or not, but it was Keating and Austin in the hole, and Keating's the guy who ends up on his back as Austin lowers his shoulder, and as you mentioned, picked up that extra yard, yard and a half, Andre, after the first hit. That's what you gotta do, Dave. You get that turnover, you gotta capitalize on it. Second and four coming up for Upper Perk. And Austin rolled out of bounds by DeMar Lear after a short game. 
on that interception, you know, I was going to say this earlier. I didn't know if uh, Herman really ever had possession of the football. Mm -hmm. And from that angle, it's really hard to tell whether he ever has possession of that ball. Right. You know, some people are going to say that might have been an incomplete pass. And that was my initial uh, feeling on the play. Uh, but everyone went after it. Herman really didn't seem to argue much after it. So he's right. probably thought he had the football too. But my initial reaction was that was an incomplete pass. Third and three coming up from the park. Oh, there's a hole there. And Austin will be very close to this first down after not having it. Oh, he has the first down. He's and over the line. He's not in the end zone, no, but he's definitely got the first down. He's got it. And again, you know what's really ha helped them? Was the out and up, the first play there. When Again, after a big first turnover, go. go for the juggler. Go for that big play, especially if the guy's at a corner like Herman. Again, he wasn't... His head wasn't into the play. He was upset that he fumbles the football. And Rogers beat him on the out and up and we laid it in there perfectly. And the whistle sounds. We have an official timeout time here. Is, uh -oh. They're yelling at our cameraman down there. <laughs> <laughs> cameraman <laughs> knocked over the pylon in the corner. Tommy Ramsey. <laughs> Hand off to Austin right up the middle. He picks up a couple. You know, Dave, it's kind of funny. It seems as though, like, LC can only wait until Upper Perk starts to strike at them. Then when Upper Perk was now they get it in full game. Well, that's what I'm talking about, the emotion of this mm -hmm. football game, is that LC kind of really plays to the level of their competition. They keep going along, going along, going along. All of a sudden, they get smacked in the mouth a little bit. Then they get ticked off, and they go right down the field and do something in return. No question about that, Andre. That has been the way LC has played a lot of this year. You're right. They have not gone out and really dominated people like they did in the past. Austin gets the handoff over right tackle. He's not in yet. I think LC snuffed that one out. Good pursuit, though. Good lateral pursuit by both defenses on the run. This time I used I used number 44 as a decoy this time. I like a little play action here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let the quarterback keep the ball or either that or, or run a little cross buck action. Let number 44 take all the defense with him somewhere and then go somewhere else to get your score. Be a secondary, something to think about. Don't want them to start the last thing that's going to be all on the ground. Hitting the two-minute mark here in the third quarter. Still not at that 14, but Upper Perk driving at the doorstep for a score. Up the middle to Austin. Austin, Austin. This time he bangs it in, Dave. His third one of the day. Simple dive play right here. Watch number 61. The guard pulls out in front. Longenacre with a good block, and Austin has a, a nice little walk into the end zone there. 2014 up a perk goes up. 152 to go. And getting ready for the PAT. He's got it, Dave. On the Norco Motor scoreboard, it's Upper Perk 21, Lansdale Catholic 14. clearance has arrived and just when you could use a new car timing is everything isn't it as you can see on the replay Dave nice blocking up front by upper perk on that right side enabling Austin to cash in on six I tell you what, Andre, I'm glad we don't do too many games over here. I'd, I'd weigh about 275 pounds. Oh, you get pounds. over here. <laughs> they do. The, the, the women over here really take care. You're yes, headed by A.D. Paula Gever. They just do a nice job. And we're eating brownies and donuts <laughs> and sodas, and, and they wait on you. And I'm like, goodness. <laughs> the modern there talking to waiting on. Of a perk defense waiting for him to cross the 33 before they finally bring him down. And I tell you what, the, the special teams guy of the day has been number 54 so far, Nick Yoder. He has really went down and covered kicks. But again, DeMar Lear has shown a lot of his versatility, Andre. Is he not only plays offense and defense, but he returns punts and kicks as well. Just a great threat to have on any kind of ball club. When you have a quarterback that can do that as well, it's the running mentality we talked about with them before is LC, first and 10. Well, let's see if 
LC can hold on to the football here a little bit better. They've been right really, to the air. Yeah. Nice pass completion. Well, now you can see why Kellogg has caught the eye of uh, Coach Algio. He's a young sophomore, didn't play a whole lot in the beginning of the year. Now, all of a sudden, he goes up there and makes a real big catch and a, and a run after the catch. Again, DeMar Lear not real crisp with the ball. You can see a wild one out there. Pretty high toss. Kellogg goes up and catches it. And number 30, Tion Higgs, is there to make the tackle. And just like on the other side, you knew you couldn't shut out Rodgers for the whole ball game. And once again, this is like maybe the fourth time they've tried to go to Kellogg, and they finally hook up on that pass completion. Well, uh, Andre, I think you hit it right on the head the last uh, time we talked. And they said it, looks like it takes LC uh, something negative to happen to tick them off right. to get them back into the ball game, saying, okay, we better start playing here. This isn't a walk in the park. Upper Perk is not going to lay down and let them w win this ball game because of who they are. And now LC putting together a nice drive as they're winding down the third quarter. Bringing up a second down and about three to go. Entertaining ball game all the way around. Well, we knew it was going to be a great ball game. Right. You know, it was not going to be a 41-14 ball game like it was the first time in this playoff atmosphere where it's a do or die, Andre, there's certainly a greater feeling of urgency, and I think both sides feel that right now with a minute to go into the third period, or to left in the third period, excuse me. Keating picking up a couple. Bringing up a third down play. And I've been informed by Dave Devlin, 19 carries for 101 yards for Keating for LC. Having a fine day. Thank you, Mr. Dad. There he goes again. This time going off a right tackle for a couple. For a first down, the clock will stop as they move the chains. Talking to Mark Yergi at the half. He's working the chain gang this afternoon. In District 1 playoff games, they, they bring uh, District uh, 1 officials in to work the chain gang. Normally, you get volunteers from the school districts who, who are invaluable, who help you out doing, right. that, and doing that job. But today, we had the striped shirts over there holding the sticks as well. 21 seconds to go. Keating once again. This time, stopped right at the line of scrimmage and Wait. knocked backwards. Jake Hallman again. You know, we've called those names a lot. Hallman, Yoder, Longiter, Slonaker. A little slow getting up as well. I think that's going to be the last play of the third quarter, Dre. It's right down to two seconds left. And that will do it for the third quarter. As the third quarter does come to an end. So the locomotive scoreboard is Upper Perk, 21, Lansdale Catholic, 14. There's value, and there's McNamara Super Value. McNamara Super Value means more than 20 years serving the area with the best price and selection on new and used trucks. And McNamara Super Value also includes the best service and parts department in the area. So get on down to McNamara Subaru at 105 West Ridge Pike Limerick for McNamara Super Value. For over 50 years, Pottstown Landfill has been helping local communities dispose of their problems in a safe, responsible way. Each day, superior designs are utilized in constructing and operating the facility. The landfill gas, collected from decaying waste, is turned into electricity for the Tri-County area. Our free recycling center allows local residents to recycle easily. Tours are also available for no charge by calling 327-2703. Pottstown Landfill and Recycling Center, preserving our future today. And getting set for the final quarter, 21-14, Upper Perk. And now LC on the move. DeMar Delaire dropping back. Now he comes back the other way. Boy, what presence, doesn't he? Nice pickup, too. Yep. Number 44, Foy, was out there blocking. He kind of fell down. DeMar Lear knew where he was. He certainly wasn't a first, second, or third option on this pass. Right. Upper Perk starting to pressure, and there's number 44 all alone out there. That's good hustle by Austin to bump him out of bounds. He came flying out of nowhere. We are UP, we're number one! First and 10 for LC. They continue their move into Upper Perk territory at about the 25. 
Oh, nice hole, nice bit of running. The Filippo picking up a nice game, going off a right tackle for LC. Big number 75 leading the way. Look at Briner doing a great job getting through that hole. The big guy at 6'5 and 260 showed good athletic ability there as he got through the hole. Number good. 15, a guy we've called a lot also, Stuzenko, doing a good job in coming up and making a tackle. Good assignment blocking, too, from LC as they move the ball down further. And there's a couple off the right tackle. Well, you know what, Andre, uh, Al's usually in the booth and you're doing a great job filling in for him, but you know, he'd be happy as heck because he's looking at an overtime game. He loves overtime <laughs> games for some reason. You know, Thank he's you looking Dave. at a 21-21 <laughs> game right now. He That's thinks LC's gonna go in and he's all jacked up right now. <laughs> so in, in his stead, mention, mention, uh oh, is there a fumble? I don't know, but they stood kidding straight up. Well, that play Backed him up. <laughs> That play was not good from the giddy up there. Here's the straight hand up inside to, to Keating. Yeah, never a had it. Yes, it that is. That ball's laying on the ground right there somewhere. I don't even know if he was expecting that yeah. ball. He thought maybe he was a, a, a decoy on that play. He never had control. To him. But very fortunate for LC, they retained possession. It's going to be fourth down and one right now. And what a huge, huge play in this ball game. This is going to be a very interesting call. Do you go to your workhorse, Keating? I you tell you, try to. Well, here's what they're going to do. They're going to get to the fullback out the middle. They're going to let DeMar there keep it on the option play. And Dang. they go to Keating. I don't know if he made it. It's another. I we thought they might the let DeMar there keep on it on the, on the option. He has gained some yards on that. It's going to be first down, however, LC. Just picked up enough. Boy, that by the nose of the football, because he certainly did not get a lot on that carry. Here's Coach Algio. Again, I've known him for a long, long time, since way back in the mid-70s, and he's been a good football coach forever. Well, a new set of downs for LC to work with at 9.53 to go, and they're marching. There's Filippo again, picking up good yardage. Again, if I'm if I'm upper perk, I'm starting to put some defense in there. Now it's going to stop the middle, and also watch DeMar Lear on the option. He's picked up some valuable yards, Andre, around the end. Very interesting too because I guess they've been keying in on Keating all the time. Now he's switching up as far as his running backs are concerned. The Filippo getting much of the uh, carries on this drive. Second down and seven for LC. Stopped in the backfield and bouncing off for a pickup. That's one of the good things about this game. You've been getting some good runs, and the defense tightens up as we can see it again. Well, there's the big guy again, number 75, Briner, trying to lead him through the hole. That time he was a little late getting there. The big guy was a little slow there. Hurt the timing of the play, but give Filippo a lot of credit for bouncing off there and, and getting as much out as he could. And here's a crucial third down call right here. Third and five coming up for LC. Back to pass. Has him. Nice one hand catch by Keating. And he's very close to the goal line. Yeah, he's got Not the first the down. One. He's got the first down. So you definitely have four smacks at it. Great play by DeMar Lear, but even a better play by Keating. He does a great job concentrating there. One handed catch. Oh man, good block there as, as Teon Higgs gets cracked back on and he's still down on the field. Just a good athletic play by number 43. And on the Norco Motor scoreboard, Upper Perk 21, Lanzo Catholic 14. We'll be right back. Here's a tail end of that play. Again, it's been made by number 43, Keating. Great catch. At the tail end and the top of your screen, watch, boom. That's a good crackback block by, I think that was number 28, Timmy Herman. You yep. see this leveled Tion Higgs. We have a whistle, Dave, coming back on the play on the first and goal for LC. I don't know if there's, yeah, there's a timeout, upper perk, upper perk, time upper perk out. timeout. Don't forget about the upper perk lighting fund. Buy a brick or join a donation club. Send your donations to the lighting fund in care of the business office at 203 West 5th Street, right here in East Greenville, PA. That's 19, or excuse me, 18041. As we were walked into the stadium today and they have a little poster about how how close they are to their goal, and they are very, very close to getting all the money they need to put lights over here at Upper Perk Yeoman, and make sure that you join in and, and uh, help out. Yep, so I was pointing at the guys like upstairs too, because I was talking to some of the people and trying to get a roof for up top. Here's that crackback play again. 
Watch Tiggs. Ooh, Higgs gets one right there. It was a good clean block. It's a crack back block. And I think that was Timmy Herman, number 28, out there helping out his buddy Keating. Keating now with about 150 total yards in offense and also doing a good job defensively with nine tackles in this ball game. First and goal, they give it to Keating, and the referee decides he's got a touchdown right up the middle. So Elsie comes right back again. And then all of a sudden, though, you have this crucial extra point, Andre. We saw LC miss one earlier. This is a simple dive play right up the gut. Good initial contact by number 88, who we saw injured on a kickoff earlier, John Durr. But he's back into the ball game, and Keating just shows good leg strength as he's able to get in. Let's see. Are they going to go? They're going to go for a. Oh, no. I thought they were going to go for two here to win the ball game, but they're going to try to tie it up right here. 21 20. As we get ready for the point after attempt from LC. Starts with the snap, Dre. I know. Starts with the snap. What's up? He missed it. No he good. missed another one. So Upper Park keeps their lead at 21 20 on a Noco Motor score, but we'll be back right after this. kicker hates is the fact is when he has to kick the laces and look at DeMar Lear. He has the laces pointed right at the kicker. He doesn't spin the football. That's really not an excuse for missing the, the extra point, but that is one of the things that kickers look at. They're looking down there. They want to see the laces faced away. And right now, the big guy, number 43, has done a great job other than trying to make PATs. He's 0 for 2 on the afternoon. They probably been better served trying to run a, an option Gotta play or something two. with DeMar Lear going for 2. Now they're down by 1. 35 to go. We get the scrim kick right to the upper part liner who takes it and gives up a part good field position at about the 40, looks like they're close to the about the 44. And he and he hurt some people right there. You know, he really took it to him. I think that was big number 98, Joe Adam. He just got that ball and ran straight ahead as hard as he could, and he took it to the defense. So a perk will be operating with first and ten. and trying to see how much time they can eat off their five. Well, let's see if they can try to establish number 44. As I said, I talked to David Devlin there, and he said he only gained 12 yards in the last seven carries that he had. They've got to try to establish him a little bit, and right now, Joe Keating starting to take over this ball game. That's his 10th tackle on the afternoon. Great penetration just burst right through, basically untouched to make that hit behind the line of scrimmage. Well, they're starting to gamble a little bit more defensively, Andre. That was a, an all-out blitz there. As, as Keating saw a hall, he, he, he shot it, and he attacked Austin and caught him two yards in the backfield. And now they have a second and 12. And the points you mentioned, too, about the veteran ball club from LC, not unwavering because they missed an extra point because they know the type of a defense that they have. Well, they were, they've been in the districts for the past couple of years. They know the importance of these big games. This is all new to the Upper Park Indians. Second and 11, Austin with the carry. He stopped after only a minimal game. But here's number 56 leading the charge for LC. That's Kosminski. Doing a pretty good job in it, on that interior defensive position. And again, Keating was right there to help finish him off. Bringing up a third down situation for Upper Park. Watch number 43 right here as he fends off the, the offensive guard, number 53, and then he gets over there for an assist. You know, they've also, the credit has to go out to these kids who can do this both ways, playing offense and defense, making sticks like they just came into the ball game. Third and eighth for Upper Park. Play action pass. Has him. Is that Rogers? Did he get a foot inbounds? Oh, good, says, that's, yes, he did. That's 82. That's Cotteritz. Cotteritz. Six foot four inch. Wide out. Big frame. More rolling that way. Watch Cotteritz. Oh, yeah, he got that left foot in. Good catch by the big guy. He was the guy who was wide open on that right at the end of the first half. He wanted that bomb. Dan Cotteritz, six foot four inch, 185 pounder. Up a perk with fresh downs to Boy, work that was with. a big first down there yes, on third was. and long. First and ten for up a perk. Going to give Austin a blow too as he's out of the ball game, talking to the trainers, trying to settle him down. Then they go to the big guy up the middle. Right up the middle. Wow, that's number 99, Darren Henry, 6'2", 215 pound junior. That was one of their down linemen as well. Crossed up the defense there as they ran that cross buck action. Watch his plays. Everybody's looking for number 30 Higgs now, mm -hmm. and they run the fullback trap. They get a good block. Look at number 43, Keating getting sealed. 
And he's into the secondary, and Brian Foy has to make the tackle after a first down pickup. Good thing Brian stayed at home, too. He doesn't, he's not there. He's gone. I tell you, what a big pass and catch by Moyer and Cotter. It's on third and nine. Yes. Big play. First and ten for Upper Park as they're moving the football rather well. Higgs goes right up the middle, left right tackle, picks up a couple. And Higgs is the heir apparent to number 44, Austin. He's only a sophomore. You're going to hear a lot about number 30, Tion Higgs, in the next two years around this Pac-10. Every time he touches the ball, he, he reminds me of another number 30, Charlie Garner, who's not the featured back, but right. when he gets into the ball game for the Eagles, he makes things happen, and the same thing happens with number 30, Tion Higgs. He gets in the ball game, he picks up yardage. You're only going to get a couple touches a game, so you got to let something happens right. on the ones you get. Yeah, absolutely. Second and seven for Upper Perk, six minutes to go in the fourth quarter. There's the counter gap. Pigs off a left tackle, dives, fumbles. No, he was down, he was down. Ground could not cause a fumble. Boy, if they give that ball to LC, Upper Perk gets a bad call there. All right, you can see the officials. Watch the end of this play. His elbow hits the there ground. You know, they're kind of close. Good eye though, Dave, good eye. I'm looking, fumble. Well, his knee, his knee is down, he comes down and hits the ground. That's when he fumbles the football. Ground cannot cause a fumble. His knee's down, and there's the ball comes out. That's a good call by the striped shirts. That's why those guys are doing playoff games. They are right. some of the better officials around the area, and that's why they get chosen to do playoff games. Third and one, Dave, for Upper Perk. Nice drive going, too. The big guy's back in the ball game, number 44. And Austin breaks him to the second there, and he picks up the first down and more. So once again, Dave, the, the critical part was the field position off of that kickoff. Upper Park had a short field to work with, and they're taking advantage of it. And right now, Austin is taking advantage of the defensive secondary as he's still delivering punishment. See, that's what's so good about having a guy like Higgs who you can bring in there and spell number 44 from time to time and keep him fresh at crucial situations. And right there was definitely a crucial situation as he picks up a big first down. First and 10 for Upper Park is a steadily move in deep Lansdale Catholic territory and chewing up some clock as well. Keep it on the ground to the big guy. There he goes. Oh, Touchdown. Austin breaks the Touchdown. tackle. He's gone. And Upper Perk pads the lead even more. And you were talking earlier about Austin, how they had been containing him, and he takes this drive to show that he didn't contain me that much. And he reminds me so much of a buddy of mine, Todd Detar, who played fullback at Passau High School in the mid-'70s when I did. Number 44, big, strong, tough kid who runs to pay dirt. And Chuck Austin, or Craig Austin, excuse me, did a great job right there. Cutting back against the seam, bust two tackles right there. You're not going to bring him down with arm tackles. You've got to bring your body and your shoulder along with him. And number 44 certainly knows how to get into pay dirt. And he's been there about 57 times this year. Dave, if I'm not mistaken, is this our first flag of the ball game, penalty-wise? Well, it's it's, it's uh, one of them anyway. I think okay. we might have had one in the first half. All sides All against sides Lansdale Catholic. Let's see if Coach Moyer decides to go for two right now. See if he decides to go for two. Hey, you're only a yard and a half to go. You go for two. That makes LC score twice to beat twice. him. Yep. Exactly. I like this call. I like this call a lot. Especially when you got the hot hand number 44 in there. You got a yard and a half to go. You run your best running play. Right now is what you do. You look over your scouting report. You say, this is our best back, and this is our best running play. Now stop us, LC, because when we get this two-pointer, we're up by nine. This is the ball game right here. Okay, so here we go. Austin gets the call. Oh, he doesn't get it. Oh, yes, he does. He does. He Second does get effort. It. Second effort. Got him. Nine-point lead now on the Norco Motor scoreboard. Upper Perk goes up 29 to 20. We'll be right back after these words. Right, they got a yard and a half to go. LC's in that goal line defense. They shoot the gaps inside. They get good penetration right there. They haven't stopped in the backfield, but number 44 just leans in there and breaks the plane, and that's all you gotta do is break the plane, and there he is, Craig Austin. Not They're gonna start effort. calling Steve Austin the $6 million man <laughs> soon. Third effort. That's what you do. We talked about this earlier, keeping those legs churning, 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 and then bam. Fourth touchdown of the day for Austin, as I said. He set all kinds of school records for, for touchdowns, for yards, mm -hmm. and, and he's padding those totals right now. Like you said, very quietly, too, was up a per kicks off the LC. Here's Kellogg. Stealing it at the 10. 
He's coming across the grain. And he's finally met and stopped and brought that up to 20. So we'll see, we'll operate with 4.45 to go. Well, both number 99 and number 98 for Upper Park have played extremely well. Joe Adam and also Darren Henry have played very, very well for Coach Moyer here this afternoon. Now let's see if LC has been the nature of this ball game. It seems as though when Upper Park strikes, LC comes back. So let's see what LC has up their sleeve to try to get this game closer. Well, the, the thing that really uh, puts a, a, a chink in the arm here is the fact that they're down by nine. They need two scores, Andre. A touchdown and a two-point conversion only gets them to 28, and they have to get to 29. There's going to be a defensive timeout by Upper Park because they looked a little bit unsure the way things were. Number 80, Rogers called timeout because he was not happy. He did not want to take a chance of, of making a bad play right there as the defensive coordinator walks out onto the floor. Yeah, you don't want to get the score and give up something on the first two plays for the next uh, possession. And Dave, Coldwell Banker, Landis, and the professionals is now collecting non-perishable food items until December 14th. Bring in your food item to their office located at 1300 East High Street, Pottstown, and register to win a free turkey. All items to be donated to a local charity. And there's the Upper Perk Band. We talked about the Pottstown Band doing a great job on their truck dresser. This Upper Perk Band is, is very good, too. And we were over here earlier when they, they dedicated their, their new uniforms and things for the big fundraising project that they ran over here. Now they're going to fundraiser number two, which is to get some lights over here. Pretty bad part about that, though, Andre, is we're not going to have any Saturday afternoon games anymore. Everybody's going to be playing Friday nights, and you know, it's going to be tough on us to, to try to get as many games in as we normally yeah, do. Right. Uh, Saturday afternoon games are nice. I think Pirates will be our last one as far as Saturday yeah. is concerned. Yep. LC operating first and 10, the Martyr Lair. Had a notion to keep it. Wow, Tion Higgs up. broke on that football very well. Man, that's good closing speed right there by the young sophomore playing center field. He read the eyes of Michael DeMar Lear and really broke hard on that football. Good defensive play. Yes, it was. Now, I'll say it's not like they don't have enough time to do anything. They've got four minutes, 39 seconds to work something. But you can't have a 12-14 play drive. That's right. Second down and 10. Martellier in the shotgun. Keep it. That's a keeper. And he's finally brought down as he crosses the 30. And Upper Perk will be happy to give him those type runs. You know, pick up a couple yards, keep the clock moving. Nothing big, keep him in front of you. Right. Because remember, they need two scores. Hurry up offense for LC. Clock winding down to about 4-10. Now we have a flag on the field, Dave. I don't know if there's too many men on the field for upper perk or delay a game or what. Maybe there's an illegal substitution. And upper perk. Yeah, it's going to be an illegal substitution. Off. Yep. Yep. Well, we have those new referees. We don't have Pac-10 referees today. They're not used to, to, to being wired and mic'd. You know, they're, they're wasting air time. They could get some, <laughs> get their face on the screen there. First and 10 in the shotgun to Marta Lair. Wow. He just overthrows everyone. Yeah. Except for the guy in about the fourth <laughs> row of the stands <laughs> over there. He was looking for Derek. Miscommunication here on DeMar Lear's part here is it looked like he thought somebody was going to do an out and he doesn't in. Even so, that ball was not thrown very well. One zig when they should have zagged. Brings up a second down in 10 for LC. 4.02 to go. And again, this is a do or die situation, Andre. The loser goes home, the winner keeps on playing. DeMar Lear rolls out, looking, fires incomplete. Timmy Herman sat down in that open area. I can see Coach Algio telling Michael, to, come on, Michael, tuck that ball under and run with it. Pick up some yardage here. And not a good, not a good pass right there as Herman was open right around the first down marker. The wind is starting to pick up here, Laundry. You oh, can yes, sell by is. the flag. It is swirling. Big third down play for LC. Third and ten. 
These are these are the plays that Michael Demar Lear over the years have made, though. Here it goes. Here we go. Oh, he's going to be real close. If not, oh, he's he got has it. it. He's got the he first it, down. Yep. As I said, that's why he's been able to win championships. That's why he takes a half-court shot to beat Pottstown to win the league championship. Those are the things that Michael DeMar Lear has done throughout his career at Lansdale Catholic, and that's why he is one of the most valuable guys in the league. Last year, definitely. This year, it's either he or Austin flip a coin. You're right as we have a upper perk player down after that. I think it might have been big number 76, foul on the play. Here comes Chris Slonaker. Austin hanging He and on. Austin are all tied up. And there's number 88, guy who's played a pretty good solid game, John Durr as well. <clears throat> well, looks like that's probably Slawnaker down at the bottom. There he is. He's Six foot three inch, too. 210 pounder. Yes, he has. Especially on the defensive side of the football. Some of the fans here braving, braving the weather. It's not the best of days. Nice turnout. Both sides. 3.39 to go, Dave. Ball game winding down the fourth. North Carolina scoreboard up a perk leading 29 to 20, and we'll be right back. He starts to log off the field in his own power. You always like to see that, Dave. Always a good sign. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if he takes a player too off and he's right back in there. I know the doctor and the trainer wants to look at him. He says, hey, I'm okay. This is a championship game. This is a, this is a district one playoff game. I'm not going to worry about a little Nick. First and 10 coming up. So I'll see the Marley dropping back to fire. He's going for it all. Incomplete. Good coverage by Rogers. He's looking for Herman. Rogers had the inside position there. No push off from uh, Herman. This is the out and up. This is trying to catch a quick one right here. DeMar Lear puts the ball up. And look at the position by number 80. That's good job oh, by number 80. A little bump in there. Both guys going for the football. That's why they don't call interference on that play, even though it did look like Herman initiated some contact. Second and 10, DeMar Lear finds a receiver open. And he drops that ball again. You know, that's the third it. straight time that Herman touched the football. He's, he's laid it on the ground. And very uncharacteristic of the sure hand of Timmy Herman. Again, it's a little stop pattern. Again, you can see the ball coming out right there. And very fortunate for him that number 88, Durr, comes over and knocks that ball out of bounds. A rapper perk might pounce on it, and that baby, that game's All over. Right. They gave him the completion. Dave setting up a third and three. The Marley is scrambling. And he was going for Herman, who never really had his balance on that play. And the yeah. ball kind of just showed up. Yeah, Timmy Herman does not look comfortable out there on this field at all today. I don't know if it's the weather. I don't know if it's his, the footing. But the Marley does a good job of biding time. And now he throws a dart. That might have been one of the better passes that DeMar Lear has thrown today. He threw a ball with some authority on it, and Timmy Herman just couldn't come up with a play. This might be the ball game, Andre. Fourth, fourth, and, fourth three. and four, fourth and three and a half. Mm -hmm. Fans are getting into it. DeMar Lear in the shotgun. Keating has him open, and the first. Well, when it's go-to time, go to your go-to man. Exactly. And that time, number 43 was that go-to guy. They just slipped him out of the backfield, found that soft spot in the zone, and picks up three and a half yards. He only needed three. He got three and a half. Hurry up offense for LC as they try to cash in on it. The mortar left flushed out of the pocket. Tip drill. Oh! As it deflected and incomplete. I thought number 30 Higgs was going to come up with it as, as Tion had a beat on it. Watch in the middle of your picture there, number 53 is all over the play. That's Jake Holman. See if he steps up and gets a hand on it. Yep, yes, he gets he the hand on it. Watch number 30, Tion Higgs. Ooh. Close. Second and 10. Martin Lear once again dropping in the shotgun. Nobody. Nobody. Now he keeps it. And brought down. And now they have to start worrying about that clock, Andre. That clock keeps ticking, ticking, ticking. And it kept him in bounds, too, is a good point. We're down to 2.35 to go. And LC's got to put it in soon. Like I said, you don't have time for 12, 14 play drives. Has his man open on the right side near the 30. And that should be enough for the first down. Yes, clock Herman. should stop as they move the chains. As Herman picks up the first down. 
Oh, how big was that extra point? You can't talk about that enough if it comes down to that. Well, it's definitely big either way, Andre, because it changes the complexion of the ball game. It changes what LC has to do. Right. If DeMar Lear, once again, looking, scanning the field for a receiver, he has a man and met abruptly. He got popped. Number 31, Blake Sager, has been around for a couple of years as well. He knows how to play the game back there in the secondary. DeMar Lear does a great job of buying time. And the thing about Michael is the fact that he reads the field. He sees the whole field. He's got good vision. They feel like they got to take a timeout at the end of that play with 2.05 to go. As you mentioned, we'll see calling time. Sager hit on the hit. This is as we look at the North Motor scoreboard. Upper Perk leading Lanzo Catholic 29 to 20. We'll be back with the finale right after this. Fourth quarter, winding down, Dave. LC calling that timeout with a second and seven to go. Well, you know, again, it, it looks like an impossibility right about now, Andre, with two minutes to go. They need two scores to, to win this ball game. But again, you never count out the, the Crusaders when number 13's in the ball game. Marta Lair scrambling out the pocket, firing deep, and just overthrows his intended receiver. Had Panzula out there. He's the, he he's the little one. He's the guy who makes some plays, though. They run a flood route to the right side. Everybody out there, there's Panzula going to the corner, and he has him. DeMar Lear just leads him too much. You know, when you're running the same way as your receiver is going, you cannot lead him because if you do that, the momentum just takes the ball that much further. you got to throw it right at his head, and Can't the ball will drift right plant. there. My got you. As he rolls out again to the right. Has Herman for a nice gain, another first down pickup. But you're taking a lot of time off the clock just to get down for this score. Well, you know, this is going to come down, and if they score here, can they cover, re recover the onside, onside kick? That's what it's going to come down to. As I said, that, that extra point just changed the whole complexion of this ball game because right now LC would not be in that panic mode that they're in if they are, they're only down by seven or even eight. Marley rolling out looking for someone, still scrambling. And an incomplete pass. <laughs> Torn his friend talking to the person. They said, nobody. That's what you call a coverage, Steve, a coverage of play. Yeah, it's a coverage nobody sack. Nobody to throw to. Coverage sack is what they call him, although they had to throw the football away, so it wasn't really a sack. But mm -hmm. he does have to throw the football away because nobody's open and credit the upper perk defensive secondary with that play. Bringing up a second down for LC. The clock basically the enemy now, as we talked about. It's 142 to go. And as you mentioned, Elsie's whole game plan having to change now because of that extra point. They're going trips this way, see if they roll to the left. The Martellier flushed out, lets it go. Is it intercepted, intercepted. or not? Intercepted, Austin. Intercepted. Austin caught that football. Wow. Big turn of events. Number 44 comes up with that football somehow. I thought Tion Higgs had it. DeMar Lear steps up to try to thread the needle right here. And that ball bounces up off somebody's leg right into the hands of number 44, Austin, yes, and he's the going play, the other yeah. way with it. I oh. thought Tion Higgs had that football, and next thing you know is number 44 is going the other way with it. So up a park, big break. Great interception on that play by number 44, Austin. And Austin gets the handoff and picks up a couple. Here's the interception one more time. Watch the ball. I hit this tipped up into the air. Tion Higgs had it, tips it up into the ground, right into the hands of number 44, Austin. And there he is. My choice for MVP this year. Again, he and Michael DeMar Lee are number one and number two. And again, you can flip flop them either way. Uh, I'm going to go with Austin this year. He's had a great year. And there he makes a, a, a miraculous play as Tion Higgs tips it in the air. And Craig Austin comes down with it. That's the thing about it we talked about earlier, too. He did it quietly. No flash, you know, no glitz. He just did a great job year in, game in, game out. Well, don't forget about the Lubbock Motors play the game, Al, that or Andre. Up. That's got to be coming up shortly. Let's do it right now, Andre. Okay. And here's the play right here, the play that we just saw. Tion Higgs flashes on the ball, tips it up, watch him get his hand on it, watch number 30 flash into your screen right is. there. 
Tips it up, and number 44 is right there to make the play. When you hustle, good things are going to happen, Andre. Exactly. And congratulations to not only number 44, but the rest of the Upper Perk Indians and our Ludwig Motors play the game. Ludwig Motors on third and Hanover Streets in Pottstown. Down to our last 128 as once again the workhorse Austin gets the handoff. And that'll be LC. I don't think LC has any more timeouts left. He's on a motion for one. Clock continually running. Yeah, they do not have any left. If they call a timeout here, it's a five-yard penalty delay game, and they start the clock. They do not have any timeouts left. Hard for our ball game, too, on both sides of the ball. Well, we knew it was going to be a good game, yes. Andre. We, know we talked about I said, you know, wipe out that 41-14 right. nonsense. That was in the beginning of the season. Uh, Upper Perk obviously playing the best ball in the league. And I said what really catapulted them into this season was that great come from behind victory over here against Pottstown when they couldn't stop Pottstown. But all of a sudden, they came out of nowhere, led by number 44 to win that ball game by one at the end of the game. Got a flag on the play there. Might be a legal procedure against the blue shirts. Somebody jumped early. 44 seconds left. Oh, that's going to be a delay game call. OK. Fans weren't disappointed either, too. When you get a nice crowd like this, braving the elements and coming out and enjoying a very good football game. So once again, now you toss the weather aspect out. Good scoring, both ball clubs moving the football well, coming up with defensive stoppages when they had to. Well, you know what? As I said, it's a do or die game. Right. One team's going home sad. The other one's going to be happy as heck because they're playing again next Saturday. And it looks like the Upper Perk Indians, and uh, they're going to play Strathaven. The number one scene, 7 o'clock on Friday night, and I hope we can get there. Look at this. Look at this. He might go 100. Open. He's going. DeMar Lear, Lear has enough. The last one. DeMar Lear has enough to catch him. Uh -oh. Fumbles it. And DeMar Lear recovers it. See that guy? That's, what, that's why I love that guy as a football yes. player. He knows his team is up against insurmountable odds. He hustles Austin down, runs him down from behind, and punches that ball free. You knew he was thinking about it. Right there he's thinking about it. Boom, what a play by DeMar there. Then he doesn't even give up on the play. Still he goes after that. and picks up the fumble. As I said, that guy is a winner. You know, even though his team's going to come out on the short end this afternoon, Michael DeMar Lear deserves all the accolades and all the credit that anyone can get him. Gives it all he's got. He's dude. like You're Pete right. Rose. You hated that yeah. guy when he was against you, but when he was on your team, you loved him. Watch Austin. Austin showing good speed, not breakaway speed. DeMar Lear has enough to catch him. Watch his pop from behind. You knew he was going to try it. He had to. He had nothing else to do. Now he Whoa. goes. That's over here to Herman. Man. Trying to get out of bounds. Can't get there. They have no timeouts left. Clock running they got no timeouts seconds. left, Dre. Coming down to 15. And, and the student body here at Upper Purse getting ready to storm the field. They might bring the goalpost down on this one. They're giving you the countdown. We that got is going to be a penalty. Man. Illegal, illegal procedure, LC. illegal procedure. <laughs> Student bodies getting ready, boy. They're at the field. They had the field covered right about now. They have it surrounded. And it looks like Upper Perk versus Strathaven Friday night at Strathaven, 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock. And I hope we can be there, Andre. Because this is what it's all about. Well, six seconds to go. It was the one time LC couldn't counter. This is how this, the game had went. One would score, another would come back, and now we finally got it down to the last six seconds, LC. Well, they're calling timeout. One I guess they left. did have one timeout left. They're calling timeout. I don't, I don't know where they can come up with a, a nine-point play, Andre, but... But again, that's part of, part of the mindset of the Crusaders is to, to play the game to win it. Exactly. Neither side disappointed either fan-wise, as we've mentioned. Good entertaining ball game. We got to see the pass along with the run. Both teams mixing it up well. Well, we have six ticks to go. I'm sure it's going to be one more play and that'll be it and again if i'm upper perk i'm just playing four across in a deep prevent let them catch the ball in front of us tackle them they can't stop the clock unless you let them get out of bounds here we go 
Very dejected LC group. Down to their final play. Here it is. Hook and lateral. Hook and lateral. But the ball was incomplete. It was incomplete. Still There's still two, two seconds. The still two seconds. <laughs> A little Student premature rush there by the fans. <laughs> Student body's all jacked up. <laughs> and I don't blame them. I'll tell you what, that's part of it. You know, oh, that's yeah. what, you know, high school sports is all about that student body involvement, Andre. Have some enthusiasm. Get behind your club and do what you can. And, and uh, these people over here at Pennsburg deserve to hoop it up and have some fun. Exactly. This should be it. Here's the same play again. Hook and lateral once again. Uh -oh. Throws it back. Uh -oh. this, is, this is a Stanford play. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Here it is. Look at it. They still got it going. DeMar they still Lear. got it going. Gives it off again. Somebody's got to get behind him. Nobody's behind there him. There it is. That's Herman. Why not? Why not? He might go. Oh, he's going to go. He might go. One man he to might beat, go. Man. He might go. He, he made is. it. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Not a flag down at all. No, but the it game wasn't. is over. And you got to give them a lot of credit for making that play, even though it doesn't mean a whole lot. Other than that, maybe they covered the spread oh, now, yeah. Andre, or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but give LC a lot of credit for really still going through it. And that's the ball game. That'll be the ball game. There'll be no extra point there. They cannot win it. And that final score, 29-26, Upper Perk advancing in this one playoffs. Now let's go down to the field. I believe Dave Devlin's going to be down there and try to get a word with Coach Moyer yeah, from Upper Perk. Yeah, Dave Devlin's down there amongst the whole crowd there trying to find the head coach, Steve Moyer. I don't know if we can find him or not, but we'll give it a shot. Let's see what happens. Devlin's down there in amongst that crowd. Now what Devlin should do is get about six people, throw the microphone back to one, have another <laughs> one throw it to get well, in Devlin's there. Well, Devlin's a small guy. He probably got trampled down there. You know, he's not used to crowd control. <laughs> Let's look at this play again. This is the old Stanford play. The only thing that didn't happen was they didn't run over the tuba player or the trombone <laughs> guy and crush guy. Watch this play, baby. This is, the, this is the play of the year right now. Okay, now we're going right, to throw it down to Devlin. Devlin. Here we are with a uh, uh, prick human head coach, Steve Warren. Steve, first of all, your emotions. You waited all year long oh, man. This to is get beautiful. back at them. How does this feel right now for well, you? I feel those kids deserved it. I mean, they, they did one heck of a job this week and all year long to be at this point, and they deserve what they got. And I, I really, I mean, it was tough, you know, that crazy play at the end. But defensively, I mean, to pre prepare for them, we just played Monday. To be ready for them on Saturday the way it was, that was a, lot of, a heck of a lot of tough work. All right, kids did a great job. Coach, coming into the game, you knew it was imperative that you established Craig Austin. You right. did that right off the bat. Yep. I guess I had to give the team an emotional lift right from the start of the game. Absolutely. We had to win up in the trenches. We had to win with our front line. We had to win with our tough running. We had Got to it. be able to mix it up in the second half when we did a little bit, and that gave us the big play that we needed. And we had to play sound defense, and we did. We didn't give up the big play on defense, and that was critical. You have to defend the Mike DeMartelier all game long. You were oh, able to yeah. contain him, not allow him, as you said, the big play. Yeah. I guess had, you know, hats have to go up to your defense. Yeah, they're, they're, those drives had to take, you know, 10, 12 plays, whatever they were most of the time or even more than that. That was critical. Couldn't give them up the big play. See if they'd make the mistake. They did. They turned it over a few times, and we played good, solid offense. It was really a great ball game. Coach, good luck to you next week against Strathaven. Enjoy it. Okay, right. Okay, we're back All up right. here, Andre. I don't know what he said down there to Coach Moore, but <laughs> yeah. I know Coach Moore is a happy human being yes. right now, and deservedly so. His team has played extremely well all year long, capped off by this revenge victory here today against LC. And watch this last play. Here this is go. our Ludwig Motors play to game number two. Co play to there game. we go. Yeah. Watch this. Watch this. Back over the shoulder. He doesn't even know where that ball's going. It goes this right two. to Keating. Keating over Three. here to Panzola. There's Four. Panzola to Marlier. The Marlier knows what to do with it. He's going this way. He's going this way. Five. Back to Herman. Oh, no, that's back to one of the linemen. Six. He flips over to Herman, and here's the guy who makes it go. Look at this. <laughs> Upper Perk is exhausted right now, so is I. <laughs> I am, too. I'm passing this one back to you, Andre. <laughs> Excellent. Unbelievable play. What a great play. He said all they need to do is run game. over a guy with a tuba or a trombone or something, and that would have been perfect. <laughs> I'm not going to score a card. Upper Perk, 29, Lando, 26. Final thoughts coming up. In here, they win this ball game, 29-26. Great last play to end the ball game. Final thoughts on today's game. Well, I think Upper Perk did what they had to do, Andre. In the beginning of the game, they came out and scored on their initial drive to get over that psychological statement they had that they didn't know if they could play with LC or not, having lost to them the last two times. 
that springboard him into a ball game where he took control early. LC fought, showed a lot of character, why they've been as good as they've been the last couple years under Michael DeMarlier. Got right back in it. Missed that big extra point. That allowed Upper Perth to go down there and score and take a, a nine-point lead, and that was the end of the ball game. For the program, Upper Perth, they advanced now in the playoffs. It has to be a big win, not only to avenge an earlier win, but also to win this ball game today. Forget the weather, just a great game. Yeah, it certainly is. And now they're going to be playing Friday night against Strathaven, the number one seed in the district. A big game at 7 o'clock down there. they got to regroup. they got to have fun tonight. And remember, it's right back to work again tomorrow because their bigger goal is to now win the district championship. There you have a final score up a Perth winning 29-26. For Dave Ryan now, I'm Andre Westcott. Thanks for watching.